Welcome to a beautiful, sunlit, almost effervescent Phillip Island Grand Prix circuit for the 2023 running of March Access, put on by the Phillip Island Auto Racing Club, Piark to its friends and the sport generally. Great shots coming out of the Blendline TV opportunity here this weekend and right across YouTube and the social pages as well. We've got a huge weekend of racing and the headline act, none other than the Porsche Michelin Sprint Challenge, will be the next cars on track for their qualifying and then we go into racing. E30s, the BMWs, the XL Masters, sports cars, the new Victorian series debuting here today, XL Trophy Race, then the New South Wales Super Sports for their qualifying and a second race for the BMW E30s. But as I said, the title race here this weekend is for round one of the Michelin Porsche Sprint Challenge. And whenever the Porsche juggernaut rolls into town here at the Grand Ridge Brewery, which sponsored last weekend, and what a great idea up at Merbu North there for uh, the brewery. When the Porsches roll into town, we welcome the bearded burblar, Richard <laughs> Crail, to the commentary booth. Stop it. There's Hello, many Dad. ways I could introduce you, Richard. I thought that was appropriate. That's probably the most PG-worthy. Thank you, Daz. Nice to be here. I've been in Melbourne, fortunately, to be in Melbourne for the week, and I noticed that the moment we got out of summer, the weather turned to absolute rubbish. But I'm delighted to say that here right now, 28 degrees, a little bit over, a light breeze blowing across, keeping it nice and cool. It's quite overcast, so... There's no direct sunlight beaming down either, but it is a stunning day at this stunning racetrack. One of the world's best, and we're getting set for the opening round of the Porsche Michelin Sprint Challenge. This year's championship is really, really exciting. There's a whole bunch of young talent, Daz, in the field, and there's any one of about 10 drivers that I think could win this championship this year. But part of the Michelin Junior program in One Make Porsche Racing it's more than just getting behind the wheel of a racing car. There's fitness, there's media training, and a whole heap more. And earlier this year, we sent more than 20 young drivers off to a two-day training camp to see how they sorted themselves out. Take a look at this. The biggest thing about Porsche is everything's about development. You know, we want to continually be at the top of our game in motorsport right through the world, and the best way to do that is grassroots. That's how we build champions. We've effectively got 18 of the biggest hot shots in Australian motorsport as juniors at the moment coming through. So there's names in here that you'll certainly hear about in the next couple of years. My name's Lee Stimation from Reaction Performance. I do coaching, training and engineering for motorsport athletes. This year in the Porsche Junior Program, we're giving these guys over a two day workshop as much of an introduction to the different elements that they need to bring in to improve their performance. We did some reaction time testing, we did uh, some body composition testing, and we've also then moved on to do a beep test. That's it. One. Come on, mate. Come on, boys. Come on. Keep going. Drifting. A couple of kids that I thought were about to tap out, and we really got behind them. Everyone encouraged them, and they got another two levels out of it. Good work, Bailey. Beyond that, we do a spin test. So the spin test was just to really connect with heart rate control, what it feels like to be in different zones at 90% of heart rate max or recovering back down to 60% of heart rate max. I've never done a spin class before, but it was super cool and just even the heat in the room just makes you sweat. So it's definitely a different style training. I can feel it in my quad still today, but it's good. I think 100% the stuff to do with your heart rate and like kind of managing yourself in and out the car physically is going to be a big takeaway this season. You can kind of measure yourself fitness wise through your heart rate and stuff like that so I'll definitely take that through the rest of the season. We then did a seminar based on different elements, coaching, training, mindset and the guys really absorbed a lot through that. It's not always just about you know, doing the bicep curls and seeing how big we can lift weights and all that. Lee's uh, gone through the mental side of things, the physical side of things, and for sure I've taken a lot out of it. Every driver gets to learn a fair bit, not, about, not only about themselves, but the, the rest of the people we're, we're racing. So, yeah, very excited for the year. We've just done our 2K time trial. So that also gives us a, a little bit of an insight into their VO2 max, but cardiovascular endurance, 
also an opportunity to, to help them lift, getting their teammates encouraging them and making sure that they keep their head in the game. This morning's run, I didn't know what I had in me, but I gave it a big run at the end and it was good. I like pushing myself to the capabilities and, and seeing what I'm able to reach and, and to get to, so that's exciting. So in the gym we're going to go through strength and conditioning, so the big lifts and why they're important or what some variations are. I mean it's great high intensity, I mean that's what this sport's about, um, so endurance and you know every aspect from it. I enjoyed the gym session we did, it was, uh, it was hard, it was but all good fun, so very sweaty but yeah I enjoyed it. It's really quite interesting, uh, there is definitely some people that are that's standing out in the group and, and there's also ones that they might be the quiet achievers and they're really showing some big promise and even even some of the first year guys going into the sprint challenge like we're just seeing some real you know sort of opportunities with some of these young kids uh, bring them together like this is is an interesting way to observe where those uh, future champions are going to come from 25 cars have rolled out onto track. Now, this is where all of that hard work in the gym, in the boardroom, everywhere around, getting the money, getting the body right to go. This is where the rubber hits the track at the Phillip Island Grand Prix circuit. It's a pretty daunting old layout here at Phillip Island for any class of car, but a world-class Porsche 33 Cup car. If you're making your way onto track in one of these cars for your first time ever, it's going to be some pretty nervous moments. You can put that all behind you because this category has so much support from the manufacturer, don't they, Richard? Darren, my question to you is, when was your last 2K time trial, and how did you go? 2006, and I can't remember the time, but I made it. Good, good work. I made it, good yeah, work. yeah. I was, I was making a comeback. To what, I don't know. Yeah, I thought, like, was that before or after the under two litre improvement? Oh, it was about six, like seven that. years after that. Was. Thank you very much. I mentioned, Richard, the, that, that whole package we've just watched, the whole juggernaut that we saw roll into the track late last night. This series is very serious, but it's not only serious for the competitors and the teams. The manufacturer, Porsche themselves, throw everything at it, don't it, they? It's very important, Daz, as part of Porsche's one make series policy around the world, to have progression. So it's called the Porsche Pyramid. It starts at club level racing, so sports cars, Porsche 944s. You can see a show from them. Uh, a few weeks ago down at Sandown Raceway. That was outstanding. And then into Michelin Sprint Challenge, then into any of the Carrera Cups around the world, which is the top one make domestic category in any corner of the world. And then one big step up into the Porsche Mobile One Super Cup, which follows the Formula One circus. And from there, the world is your oyster. If you succeed in Super Cup, you're pretty much not guaranteed, but you're a very likely shot to go well in anything. And we've seen Matt Campbell progress on to become a, a factory Porsche driver. Matt Campbell started in this series at this venue in 2014, and he smoked everybody here in an outright car. You and I were there, I think we called it. We did, yeah. It was remarkable stuff. So less than a decade later, not only is he now a factory Porsche driver, he drives for Roger Penske and racing an IMSA GTP competition in action next weekend for the Sebring 12 hour. So it's a remarkable story, but he's not the only one. Jackson Evans since then, Jordan Love, he's racing for another brand now, but he's gone through the ladder here. And the latest to do so is Harrison Jones. He came through Sprint Challenge, won it, into Carrera Cup, won it. He signed for Walter Lechner Racing, running Mobile One Super Cup this year, and will have a red hot go at, I think, being a title contender. So it's such an amazing progression. And that's why we've seen so many young drivers come into this category, because if you go well in Sprint Challenge, the step up is a, a logical progression to actually take your career a step forward. Just a little bit of uh, housekeeping for you. It's the 79th round of Sprint Challenge season founded in 2008. Uh, we've had 228 races in the books. The qualifying record, old. 2015, it was set by the great Ryan Simpson at 1 minute 30.6. Now, they haven't gone near that this weekend. I think these warm track conditions, Daz, Phillip Island traditionally quite temperature sensitive for the lap time uh, production across the course of a session. So they haven't gone near that so far today, despite running new tyres. And the lap record is even older. Matt Campbell set that that weekend we are talking about back in 2014. Nine drivers making their debut in one-make Porsche racing this weekend. 26 in seven rounds. 
it's some pretty impressive uh, numbers coming out of there, isn't it? And and proof that um, if you build it, they will come, and they keep coming and keep coming. And it is across the board that the Porsche Australia management do keep the commitment. Here's a guy that knows how to win his class and uh, has done so often in the Cirrus aircraft outfit. David Goldie looking at uh, down at MG there to flick the car around. With all that grip, with a nice warm set of Michelin, it's a bit harder to flick it around. It's all gripped up. You don't want to break any drive shafts or anything like that trying to flick it around. But he will find his way back onto the track and around. We've Andrew. got 23 and a half minutes left in this session, so 30 minutes to prove your wares. Andrew is the reason why motor racing is good for tourism, because he and his lovely wife got down here early. They went to the Avalon Air Show uh, yesterday, uh, sorry, Thursday, and then came down to the island yesterday. I bumped into them at lunch at uh, Isolva de Capri on the corner down there in Cowes. It was a beautiful day. So they were spending their money in the local economy and they're staying here to go racing. So good stuff. He and uh, his good mate David Gregg have had some sensational battles. So we're working our way in. Zach Stitchbury, the young Kiwi, is quickest at the 132.1. Two brand new sets of Michelin Pilot Sport GT tyres to be used across the course of this 30-minute session. And they'll break it up into two segments, Daz. It'll basically be two 15-minute qualifying sessions in one. They'll go out on the runs they're on now with the first set of new tyres. They'll get to a peak lap time. They'll pit. They'll throw a second set of new tyres on the cars, repressured, stickers ready to go, and then use that track evolution and the knowledge they've gained from their first run to go again. And nine times out of 10 in one mate Porsche racing, it's that second run where pole position is delivered. So expect the quick lap times right at the very end. This Michelin tyre that likes two to three laps of phasing to bring up to peak performance before it punches out the ultimate lap time. Really good to see the Guild Trap name represented out on track there at the moment, making debut here this weekend. Marco Guild Trap, run, grandson of uh, the great, I guess, benefactor of Kiwi races through the generations. And we see SVG at the top of the game here in Australia with Guild Trap emblazoned across the front of his helmet. So really cool to see a direct link back to the family here as well. And also sitting so far up the timesheets. Currently in P3. Now, something we know about the Michelins is that at about now, lap four, ah, oh, Hamish Fitzsimmons off the road. That's at Lukey Heights. This 17-year-old uh, out of karting and has been electrifyingly quick for TechWorks Motorsport, and he is well bogged. You tend not to drive out of that gravel trap at the top of Lukey Heights. It's deep for a reason because it's a maximum commitment, high-speed left-hand corner. So young Zach out of Queensland, he stepped up from karting. This is his first go at circuit racing. It was fourth quickest, but he stuck. So the wave yellow's there, but I'd suggest it may be a little bit more serious than that to stop the session to get him out of harm's way. Certainly at the end of last year, the uh, Porsche Michelin Sprint Challenge rounded out its season at Island Magic. And one of the very, very rare occasions over those 200 and nearly 30 events that these cars have been in, there, uh, it was uh, one of the races didn't go ahead, so that is a red flag. This quali session will stop the clock at 20 minutes and 52 seconds left to go, and that's, we'll get that car out of there pretty quickly. That's interesting timing as well because it was starting to get into the window <laughs> for them to punch out a lap time. Uh, so a 132 1, I would have expected them to go a little bit quicker than that in that first run. So I don't think anyone got the most out of that first set of tyres. I think there was still a lot of colour on the timing monitor for some improvement there. But those teams will now get to pit lane. They'll throw a second set of Michelins on while this recovery happens. And then it'll basically work as if the qualifying session uh, ran without an interruption. And like you said correctly, Daz, it's just bunkered. Doesn't look like there's any damage there. So it should just be a flat toe. Our high arc officials will drag that car out of the gravel trap and get it back to TechWorks. And at the moment, young Hamish, he's P4. He's only three tenths a second away from the quickest time set by Zach Stitchbury, a young Kiwi. And that lap time could stand. He could remain there through this session. But uh, it's unlikely he will have the opportunity to improve. So last time we were here, we saw uh, in qualifying, it was Ryan Wood to Thomas Sargent, who eventually took the title. And uh, it was a pretty... Pretty good weekend there, because Ryan got to take a couple of race wins, but Thomas, who the Victorian motorsport scene knew so very well with all of the Formula Ford racing he'd done mm. at the Victorian State Circuit Racing Championships and also nationally in Formula Ford. So he didn't have the best results on the weekend, but uh, rode off into the sunset with a drive in the USA with McElroy. Yeah, 
Thomas was in championship winning mode at that final round. He knew exactly what he needed to do and wasn't willing to get involved in an arm wrestle with Ryan Wood. He probably had car speed over him anyway. Really looking forward to seeing what those two young guys do this year. Darren, um, Ryan's off to Super 2 with Walkinshaw Racing. So you don't go and drive for Ryan and Brucey Stewart and the team there without being pretty good. And we saw that last year that Ryan was electrifyingly quick in a cup car. And Thomas Sargent with McElroy Racing. So McElroy, Andy himself is in the States at the moment. Sun Hunter running Indy Lights in St. Petersburg this weekend. I don't know the time different works. I don't know if it's a particularly good time, but I'm sure he's up watching his team here. This is one of the first rounds Andy's missed in a long time. But Thomas will be contesting Porsche Carrera Cup North America. They launch into life next week at Sebring in the build-up to the 12-hour and the World Endurance Championship opener uh, over there in Florida. So exciting times and looking forward to seeing what our champion in Sprint Challenge can do. Thomas was amazing in these cars last year, but his drive at the back of six hour was incredible. Qualified the thing on pole, sharing with Cameron Hill, a Porsche Carrera Cup Australia champion, and uh, they were nobbled in qualifying, a little technical infringement relating to some ride height, sent to the back of the grid. And by the time young Thomas handed the car over to his boss, uh, he was in P1 from 64th on the starting grid, if you don't mind. So really impressive stuff. And looking forward to seeing what Thomas can do overseas. One of several graduates of One Make Porsche Racing in Australia. Looking back down the field as well, great to see uh, some other new names there. Braden Taylor jumps out in the wall racing outfit there as well. Great to see the Maha equipment entry on track, making uh, headway here in this session as we get back underway. The number 16 gets moving again. And Juvento just uh, gingerly making way back onto the track. He doesn't want to uh, tear any uh, any front bits off there, so just trickling across the grass. So got out of the uh, got out of it. Doesn't look like the, uh, the ultimately the bottom air dam on the front of the car hasn't come off this car, which is something that can happen. I guess a sacrificial it is. piece that will instead of it tearing the whole bumper off, it tears the bottom section of it off. Cars are all lining up at uh, pit exit as well, so. They've got themselves set to go. Red flags still being displayed. And uh, I guess we should take this opportunity to say a very big thank you to all of our officials all the way around the track. It's a warm day here at Phillip Island. And uh, ordinarily, we would say, come and join us. But this is a closed event here this weekend. But certainly, Piark are putting on plenty of racing right throughout this year. Come back down here for the Victorian State Circuit Racing Championship on the 26th of May, 26, 27, 28 of May for round three. That's a public event. Come and join us and see that one. August Access is another race meeting, very much like this one here. And then on the 24th, 25th and 26th of November, the traditional, the very traditional Isle of Magic, which we thought we were going to have you at last year, Richard Crail, but you pulled up rough and uh, couldn't make it over here. Yeah, a few little, uh, a few little delays in, in that program, unfortunately. So I sat home and watched it on Blendline TV and thoroughly, I'd like to say I enjoyed myself. I honestly didn't. The coverage was excellent. You're surprised how much you could learn. But uh, yeah, I was pretty miserable. It takes a lot to get me away from it. A, does. It a Porsche a race, Daz, I'm not yes. going to lie. I've known you for near on 20 years, Richard, yeah. and uh, there's a lot of things that uh, yeah, they're, have they're, got to go wrong before you can't make your way to the track. Let's have a look now. Everyone is making their way back out on track. Car 16, just having a little bit of a check underneath the car. I, I would say no harm, no foul. That We'll see uh, the number 16 back out on track very soon. Yeah, and still fourth quick, so 32-4. Not quite as quick as I thought. I, I thought they'd trouble the 31s. Pole here last year in November was a 30.9 by Ryan Wood. He was very good in qualifying last season, but could not launch the car. And, and every time he qualified on pole, Thomas Sargent beat him into turn one. So it's a real fine art to get these cars off the line. And that's going to be a storyline for tomorrow morning because there's a lot of drivers in this field that have never launched a GD3 Cup car in race conditions. So you've got a four litre flat six hanging out over the rear axle you've got big wide sticky michelin tires and finding the bite point in the clutch and that margin between popping the clutch and stalling or bursting into wheel spin is very very small so starts are an absolutely critical part and of course everyone's got the same gear so if you drop three or four spots by a, a bad start it's absolutely punishing for the rest of your weekend as we watch the gill trap group car of Young Marco Giltrap roll over the top of Leaky Heights. He's got uh, champion New Zealand racing car driver Simon Evans here this weekend 
just doing a little bit of coaching and he's been racing with young Marco over in New Zealand across the New Zealand summer. Done a lot of laps in a cup car on New Zealand racetracks to prepare himself for the Michelin Sprint Challenge this year and more great Kiwi representation in one mate Porsche racing. So another build lap, generally they'll take two laps to build tyre temperature and pressure in these cars before they start attacking and setting some purple lap times and sectors. Another Kiwi that jumps out on the timesheets is Ronan Murphy, son of uh, Lap of the Gods, very own Greg Murphy in 10th place currently on the track. Richard, just touching on the launching of the cars, there's actually some guys that are sitting just outside the tent at the moment that could really surprise off the start tomorrow. Sam Shaheen has done many, many cup car starts, as has um, Brett Bolton, uh, Greg in there as well. There's some guys that are going to be outside the tent that could quite easily impress on the top 10 before turn one. Sam is traditionally very good at getting these cars off the line and that comes with a lot of experience in both this category and in the Painted Dixon Career Cup Australia. So 13 minutes to go in qualifying. I think this might have brought the peak lap time a little bit further into the session rather than it happening after the chequered flag. Might be just before it. Given how warm it is here, they're building a little bit quicker than I perhaps anticipated in terms of punching out that sexy lap time number as we watch Lockie Bloxham in the 23 car for McElroy Racing. He's a podium finisher on regular occasions in last year's championship. Uh, we should say good day to Murph, I'm sure he's watching back over there. Uh, Hawke's Bay region of New Zealand has been smashed lately and uh, Murph and his next door neighbour Greg Rust were caught up in all of that. So uh, our thoughts are with everybody watching in New Zealand. Big NZ contingent following this. Porsche New Zealand heavily involved in their junior program with Earl Bamber Motorsport and Team Porsche New Zealand. So uh, g'day to all the team, the Giltrap family, who I know will be watching on and enjoying this action. The time zone works well for uh, this racing over there. It does, doesn't it? Nice yeah. after, late yeah, afternoon yeah. time slot. I'd like to think they're sitting back with a refreshing beverage, enjoying some one-mate Porsche racing from You reckon Murph's done the lawns island. and he's packed the lawnmower away and uh, just sitting up watching uh, watching the Glenline TV coverage? Join in the conversation on the socials, but let us know. I'd like to believe so. So Ronan currently 10th in car 77. That's a Sonic Motor Racing prepared car. Mick and Maria Ritter's wonderful team that's had so much success in one mate Porsche racing here. Still no colour on the timing monitor, which means there's no personal best or session best sector times being set. So they're still in that building process, getting themselves up to peak performance when they can really attack. So it's Zach Stitchbury. Team Porsche NZ first. Aaron Shields, who goes across to TechWorks Motorsport this year for the first time. Car 116, he's second. Marco Giltrap, third, second in the Team Porsche NZ cars. Hamish Fitzsimmons, who's back on the racetrack for TechWorks, is fourth. Lockie Bloxham for McElroy, fifth. Marcus Flack, teenager, Sonic car, son of Carrera Cup racer Damien, he's sixth. Caleb Sumich, young West Australian. Uh, who's making his debut this year, but he raced Radicals last year and was pretty impressive. You know, I caught a lot of those races. They were very, very good. Uh, Tom Taplin, the South Australian, in eighth for Buick Motorworks. Taplin Real Estate. Harrison Goodman next. That's a car dropping wide. Ooh, Richard Cohen yeah. is being sucked off the back of the ripple strip there. And now we're seeing some lap time starting to evolve. So, Watson just jumped up to fourth at a 32-3. And Marco Giltrap on a good lap. Aaron Shields going quicker again in car 116. And Giltrap goes quickest at a 31.9. The first sub 32s in the session so far. Still 10 minutes to go. Harris Goodman as well. He's got the track lit up as well for Sonic. Getting very much on the ripple strips on the exit of two there. Flowing the car nicely indeed. And now being chased very, very closely for a time is Ronan Murphy, who uh, is still sitting just inside the top 10. In fact, in 10th on a 132.98. Still no one gone under the 31. That's where we would like to see the cars go. And we've got the best part of four laps in this, let's call it stanza of qualifying since the red flag halted the, uh, the session. I think it's too hot to go into the 30s in this session today. They're just the peak lap time's not there. And they've been running around on new tyres all day. They get new tyres for practice at the opening round of the championship to put into the tyre bank for the year. Aaron Shields just went quicker again at a 31.8. So a very good lap for the second year driver who was in the top three throughout most of the 2022 season. So he just bumped Marco Giltrap. So 31.89 plays a 31.90. We're watching Zach Stitchbury. He's third. Just in front of him is Marco Giltrap, who's on a very good lap. And assuming he can complete that final sector well, 
could be on course to go to the top of the pops. Marcus Flack now on a very good lap time as well. So there's a lot of energy starting to build. Murphy goes fifth with that lap. That's a good performance at the 32-2. Just three tenths away. Giltrap remains second. Fitzsimmons back up to fourth. It's changing quickly. Hard to keep up with with nine minutes to go. Marcus Flack was up as high as fourth. Has just dropped back to seventh with a couple of cars getting across the line. Great to see Phil Morris returning to top level Porsche Michelin Sprint Challenge Racing. A guy that had been around a long time. Henry's brother, John. Some of the most added uh, races, if you like, in the uh, in the challenge. And good to see uh, that Phil has got back, has uh, walked away from the uh, the Motec operation. That's all been handed over to the Bosch Motorsport uh, Corporation. Here's Marcus Flack. Purple first, purple second. Quickest of everybody on this lap. Should be a 31.7 at this rate, if not a little bit quicker for Sonic Motor Racing. He's come back from Europe and does a 31.3. So very, very big improvement for this young guy. He's come back from racing open wheel cars overseas. 31.3, 0.5 of a second now quicker than Aaron Shields. That's a very good lap time. Impressive stuff. Jumped up there. He was up at fourth, got dropped to fifth. And then that last lap, as Richard rightly saw it, Starting to light up purple sectors. There's no one else that's been doing it over this last couple of laps, although we've got some green sectors for Stitchbury and Giltrap. And I guess this is setting the early part of the season, isn't it, Richard? We'll see these names start to, in this qualifying, start to push their way up. Tom Taplin now, he's just got himself into the 10 and into the lane. Sam Shaheen has exited pit lane. He's the fastest of the AM cars. And Stitchbury goes up two spots into P2 with that lap, and it's a 31.78. So it's still 0.48 of a second for flat yeah. out in front. That's a big margin for a point there. The top nine cars were covered by four tenths of a second, and then Flack in the 78 went out and blew them all apart with a big margin. But it's a very good lap. Let's see what young Zach can improve on. Dabble Toyota's in New Zealand in the 86 series over there jumped into the shootout program that Porsche New Zealand ran at Hampton Downs over a couple of days and won this right to represent Porsche New Zealand. Personal best and fastest of the session in the first session, uh, first sector for car 78, but he's got a little bit of traffic in front in the form of Richard Cowan, who does the right thing and goes across drivers left on the exit of Siberia. So well played by the Pro-Am driver. Let's see what Stitchbury can do now as he heads up to Lukey Heights. This is where the second timing intermediate is. She's a Porsche is, uh, absolutely gives it away when they're on it, don't they? They start to twitch and, and turn around. I guess it depends on the setup that the driver's got, but if you're on the edge and you're trying to go the fastest car on track, they do look like they're being driven very fast. And I will also um, congratulate Cowan for getting out of the way there, Richard. Way too often we see drivers that uh, that don't do that. He's done a brilliant job at, uh, at doing that and yeah. getting right out of the way. Interesting one there, talking about a fan of the brand, Tim Wolf. you mentioned the Whoa, 9 off the road. Ooh, that's that's a corner. That's and, Cowan. Yeah, it is. So unfortunately for Stitchbury, it was too little too late, I think, and he did get some aero wash from that car through Siberia because his middle sector was no good and uh, was unable to improve. And now Richards had a big moment wide on the exit of turn 12 and has been able to recover, which is rare at that place. So a good bit of recovery driving from the McElroy Racing driver. It was only two laps earlier. He got sucked off the back of the ripple strip. So he's going to have to just, I guess, bring back 1% on uh, coming onto the straight because you don't want to do that too many times. He won't get away with it with that often at all. So going to touch on Richard. Tim Wolfe, a, a, a fan of the Porsche brand, a, a great racer in the Victorian Porsche 944 uh, challenge and is um, moving to this category this year and is doing a brilliant job as well. Um, really looking forward to see how Tim goes. Travels from Western Australia yep. and uh, is, do, is you know, very serious about it. The number 66 will do a very, very good job. He's certainly done his, let's call it his graduation years in the, the 944s and I think he's going to continue with this year's championship here in Victoria. So um, double duties in Porsches, that's a pretty good way to spend some uh, leisure time. We're watching Tom McLennan. He's in 14th position in the Mac Pro car, run out of the McElroy stable. Young Tom spent New Zealand's summer racing in the Castrol Toyota Formula Regional Oceana Championship, CT Frock, it was called, uh, in his first big go at Wins and Slicks Racing. So lots of experience gained through that process. Uh, Flack in pit lane from Provisional Pole, Shields from third in the lane, 
and most drivers looking to come in now. And what that red flag did was bring the peak lap speeds a little bit earlier in the session because they all went to their second set of Michelin tyres earlier than perhaps anyone expected to do so with that brief red flag we had for young Hamish Fitzsimmons. So the Stings sort of come out at the end of this session because most of the quick drivers contending for pole are sitting in the lane. So Flack at a 131.30 on provisional pole at the moment. Zach Stitchbury still lapping for Team Porsche New Zealand EBM. He's second, Aaron Shields third, Giltrap fourth, Fitzsimmons in fifth position, Lockie Bloxham sixth. He's still on the circuit. Rona Murphy seventh on debut, 0.9 away from provisional pole. It's a good effort. Uh, Harrison Goodman, his teammate in the Bob Jane T Mart's car, in eighth. And ninth is Caleb Sumich at a 32 8 for McElroy, and then Tom Taplin outside the 10. In Pro Am is Sam Shahin, just in front of David Gregg. That is a very, very good lap time from Greggy to get within point three of Sam Shahin, who is a former Pro Am class champion in the Big Boy Carrera Cup, not just in Michelin Sprint Challenge, with Brett Bolton just behind. So there's nothing in it in the Pro Am battle. And then in Class B, which is the previous generation, uh, GD3 Cup cars off the Harburg fastest there in the cover shop entry in 18th position, car number 91. And he is currently on a 135.37. So that's where your class leaders sit. We're watching Tom Taplin, but it looks to me that Marcus Flack has got this one shot to pieces. Tell you what, we just had a good lap with uh, Casper Trezida and he's solved a question that I've been trying to solve for about a week now, what to do with my long weekend next weekend, and that is uh, Hillcrest Marimbula emblazoned down the side. You can't miss it with that car. Bright right yellow car there from Wall Racing. So uh, good to see that lap. Currently sitting down there in 23rd with uh, Phil Morris behind him, and Phil is currently in the lane. In fact, if you're on track now, you're in a very exclusive club of six cars only. Yeah, so the, the session's done. They've got the most out of those tyres. And um, we just saw Caleb Sumich come across the line. This is Brett Bolton. Bold Group car, reigning champion in the Pro-Am class. Brilliantly wrapped that up. He was runner-up twice in Porsche's race within a racing sprint challenge. And he signed new support from Clipsal this year to go with Bold Living. Uh, and g'day to Matty Noll and, and the team there at Connect and to Clipsal who put that deal together. and. Courtney Liver on this car, a bit of flash of purple on the Bold Living car, run out of the McElroy stable. And Bolton just looking to bank a few more laps, four tenths down on Shahin in the battle for Pro-Am. So Flack has got this one. That's a huge result for this young guy who's come back from racing in Europe, from open wheel racing to have a go at the Porsche Pyramid, one make racing in Australia. And with a very, very impressive one minute, 31.30. He's going to grab the first pole award of the season by 0.4 of a second over Zach Stitchbury with Aaron Shields in third position. Marco Giltrap fourth and Hamish Fitzsimmons in fifth position with Lockie Bloxham next. So a lot of teams, a lot of great talent represented in that top half dozen, not further down the field as we watch Sam Shahin, who looks to me like he's going to get pole in Pro Am Plus. A couple of sprint races tomorrow, Richard, then the uh, the first of the in mini Enduros, let's yep. say, the Jim Richards uh, Endurance Trophy, which has got all the names written on it, who's won that one over the years. And uh, I've got to say, traditionally, I, you can correct me because you, you live this dream, the Jim Richards doesn't normally start at the first round. We normally get a, a sprint round in and get everyone used to what they're doing, but we're going to go launch straight into the longer race tomorrow. Yeah, and how often do you get to race at Phillip Island, basically? So take take advantage of the track time. And the way the calendar rolled this year, uh, the, the sprint challenge is at two supercar events at Simmons Plains and Sydney Motorsport Park where it's harder to get longer races in the program. So uh, needed to bank one nice and early in the season, which will happen uh, tomorrow afternoon to conclude the round. They're ripper races. They're they really, are, they really good fun. They build and build and build and you get some great stuff. Uh, Brian Taylor, right at the very back of the field, uh, 22nd position. He's second in Class B. So he's in the older model car. He gets the chequered flag. And does he improve on his final lap? He does. One minute 36.8. He's personal best of the session. Great to see the Maha equipment car out there. Great organisation down there. Those uh, great German equipment company. And uh, all over the front of Braden's car. And he's done a good job representing all the brands emblazoned across these cars. Richard, um, that concludes qualifying. That half an hour sent like 10 minutes. Yes. And uh, we had a break in the middle for that red flag. Got the number 16 out and got to continue on with it. As I mentioned, three races tomorrow. 
two sprint races and a longer one as well. Oh, the Brett Bolton on the BLTV replay down at the Southern Loop. And just lost the rear of the car with a hot rear tyre. It's a fast entry to the corner there and easy to do. Nicely captured. Uh, Brett will end up second, no, correction, third in the Pro-Am category just behind David Gregg and Sam Shahin. So Marcus Flack on pole for the first round of Porsche Michelin Sprint Challenge for 23. It's an unbelievably talented field. Looking forward to three races here at the Great Phillip Island Grand Prix Circuit tomorrow. Uh, Zach Stitchbury, the young Kiwi, on the outside of the front row with Aaron Shields and Marco Giltrap next on road to Hamish Fitzsimmons. Brought out the red flag but continues on. He's in fifth, Lockie Bloxham sixth. Ronan Murphy on debut in seventh in front of Harrison Goodman. Both of the Sonic cars going off the fourth row of the grid. Caleb Sumich out of P9 and Tom Taplin from 10. Sam Shahin, David Gregg, Brett Bolton, Tom McLennan, Matt Slavin, Richard Cowan, Andrew Goldie. Lockie Harberg on pole in Class B in front of Wolf Glickston with Knight, Taylor, Tresseter and Morris rounding out the 24 cars that will compete in the opening round of Porsche Michelin Sprint Challenge. So uh, that's it for Porsches today. We race three times tomorrow. Make sure you're here on Blendline TV to catch all the action. Thank you very much, Richard. Great to have you here at the Phillip Island Grand Prix circuit with the Porsches. We've got the B th uh, E30 racing cars coming up next, the BMW E30s. They have got a six lap sprint race coming your way. We've got plenty of racing going right on throughout this afternoon. XL's sports cars for their debut in their new series. More XL's, the New South Wales Super Sports or prototypes they're uh, commonly known as in the national series. And then finally we'll round out the day with another BMW race. So plenty to come. We'll take a quick break and be back with BMW E30's on track. one so we're basically you got on and off off And um, that's the siren that turns on the ambers independent, independent of the black. So if they told you to abort...
two no no you you have two starts there's two split starts so you turn on the red when the last cart's coming out past you yeah. and under the lane out of the lane so then they're behind the safety car safety car coming there he'll go in it you'll get it because they'll be picking up the safety car down at five. Yeah. And, um, and then the next time five times the third time is on In the 1980s, the inline six-cylinder rear-wheel drive BMW E33 series was one of the must-have cars. A sweet chassis, nimble handling, and enough power to be awesome and entertaining. And here we are, we arrive at 2023 with the BMW E30 Garagistic Racing Series cars making their way out on track. I guess it was the iteration that BMW wanted to take up to Porsche with their 944 equal 50-50 balance split weighting of the vehicles which makes ultimately a really, really nice racing car. And uh, so we are about to see what the people and the people behind the scenes of the Victorian BMW E30 racing scene have come up with. And there is some ripper cars on all rows of the grid, but Alex Jory and Jesse Bryan, we expect to have a really, really big battle with these two. The heavyweights, if you like, of the BMW E30 racing series will be right across the front row. I've been joined by Martin Taylor, who uh, not only is he joining me here in the commentary booth for the first time, but joining the BMW E30 fraternity for the first time. Martin, what dragged your attention to BMW E30 racing? Uh, I bought my first BMW back about four years ago, and then when I moved to Melbourne, uh, I joined the BMW Drivers Club Melbourne. And at the time, I owned a Toyota 86, and I was tracking it, met those guys, and thought, how do I combine these two? Hey, we do E30 racing. I was sold. Well, we're about to test your knowledge as we get into the first race for the weekend for the BMW E30s. And uh, we will have a look at the grid sheet that's already been across the screen. But we've got Royce Lynn out of P4, Ash Rogers right alongside. Brian Burke on the third row of the grid, which is not a customary position for uh, Brian Burke to be starting. So watch out of P5. Simon Schiff back to Jeff Bowles. Seth Burkhart working very, very hard in the number 42. I think he's got Matt Thulis in his corner down there, so that will help him get spots up the grid. Rory Plant, the upflow uh, non-alcoholic beer entered four-door out there, so great to see Raws out there. Daryl O'Neill, a great racer there as well. Jess Bell in the number 29. Peter Knight and the triple six of Adam Trapesky, or Trapsky out the back of the grid. 
Now, we know that David Stilwell is working very, very closely with the BMW E30s, and he has got these guys so revved up that they're all going to come down in formation, Formula One style, onto the grid, stop, and hopefully we don't waste too much time with cars straggling around the track. And I can guarantee you, Martin, that is what's going to happen. Have a look at this. They have organised themselves beautifully. Yeah, we've got a, two, a couple of newbies on the track. This is going to be yeah, the, the first that race this year. Yeah. So they're Shall under it? a bit of pressure to get this start right. It's to be exciting. It certainly will. So across the front row, very, very important for Alex Jory to get away fast. We know he can in the orange car, and we certainly know that Jesse Bryan knows his way around an E30 as well. Maybe last season didn't quite have the pace to take it up to Alex Jory all season long, but Brian Burke, the green number 27, he runs with uh, Alan Jones and Casey Stoner, two times world champions of Australia in bikes and in cars, as Alex Jory leaves a very clean number 11 on the grid behind him, and Jesse Bryant will lead the field down into turn number one. Jory goes to look for the outside there to cut off the charging Royce Lynn. Now Royce doing a good job out of XLs, moving now into the E30s. And uh, into turn number two they go. And the number four yellow and black car stands out very much in the mid pack there. But Burke around the outside, the Trans Rock refrigerated racer is a, uh, a brilliant driver in the E30s and will certainly impress as early as he possibly can in this journey. Six laps, so it is undoubtedly a sprint race. Simon Chip in the number 55 also moving up. He's in fact got right onto the back of the 27 there of Brian Burke. Hard under brakes. Cars all still feeling good. The Yokohama tyres are behaving themselves right now. They're starting to come into their optimum at about lap number three. But the drivers all uh, had some practice and qualifying sessions earlier today, so they're well attuned to the warm conditions, Martin, that we're experiencing here today. Yeah, the team were uh, happy with the opening start to the day when it was a bit cooler. A little bit of concern that the track's going to be heating up and the, so the tyres are going to be, um, the pressure's going to go up. But fantastic to see all the cars get away clean off the line and down to, down to turn one. Really impressive for those newbies. I'm, I'm <laughs> nervous about my start. <laughs> Ash Rogers now into three, the guy that uh, has spent most of his life out of Portland in southwest Victoria, or Goose to his mates. I've never been brave enough to call that to his uh, face, but uh, that's what his nickname is. He's known as Goose in there as well. He's uh, had some guidance from uh, the uh, improved production racer, Robert Braun, with his E30 racer. So watch for Ash. Um, now into position number three in car number 50. Started up out of third, so it's held that position. Royce Lynn has gone back a spot as they come to the line for the first time. It's going to be very hard to catch Jesse Bryan and Alex Jory as they lead the field down. 0.2 of a second between those two. Alex Jory is going to have to pull out all stops to get through on Jess. Fairly experienced racing driver is Jess Bryan. But uh, a very accomplished E30 racer right behind him in the number 22, that orange car. Very, very winning car in this category and always does a tremendous job. Good look at the field. BMW E30s come down. Turn three this time, hard under brakes again. Jory just looking to the ultimate line so he get, gets best drive out of the corner. Late brake, tip it in. And both our leaders go off the back of the ripple strip onto the hard stand there. So extending the racetrack, if you like, trying to flow the cars a little bit better. There's Brian Burke. He's pushing hard now. The 50. And Rogers has gone back one spot. So Ash Rogers has gone back to the very experienced Brian Burke, but he's not going to take it lying down either. Have a look at Simon Schiff. He's weighing in on in the urban camouflage red and gold car. This is good racing here between these two. Brian will be a tough ass to get through. Always, always a front runner in that, uh, I think it's called Spearmint in the BMW E30 uh, catalogue, that car. You've got one over me, but it's great to see a voice there. He's amongst the front pack. Exciting to see him racing so well. In this new, in these, uh, after getting the FBA XL series. Yes, yeah, certainly the number four there. The car done in fairly similar livery to the XL. This is certainly a big step going from a, a little front wheel drive 1.3 litre outfit to uh, this beautiful inline six cylinder that BMW 
make and uh, it is certainly a very good way to uh, to prove your worth in this style of racing. You have a hell of a leap up to two and a half litre, wouldn't it, in the straight six? Absolutely, yeah, and, and the car perfectly weighted, etc. as well. So it, it really is 2.5 litre, six cylinder, a uh, BMW five speed, the uh, A0500 Yokohama control tyres, and uh, very, very tightly, tightly controlled regulation. It's been going for about 20 years, the, uh, the BMW E30 racing, or it started, and then pushed into state level racing combined with improved production and has gradually over the years got stronger and stronger to start to field their own category. Have a look at Alex Jory. He's not taking any more of this. Two and a half laps in the book now. Alex has gone, righto, Jess, you've had enough of uh, the time out the front here. I've got you in my sights and uh, you just, uh, just about see on the headlights the crosshairs there. He's ready to uh, take fire at uh, our race leader, Jesse Bryan. Let's have a bit of a look back down to where Boykarts is. So Seth Boykarts, his dad will be racing in the Porsches coming up very soon in the Victorian Sports Car Series. And of course, Sven Boykarts is uh, a uh, owner at FBR and was one of the people that, or believe it or not, right back in the very beginning of Sprint Challenge or, or GD Cup Challenge as well, was the guy that uh, invented that type of, uh, that level of racing. So it's been very, very entrenched in the Porsche world. And it's great to see uh, his son in the number 42, Seth Boycarts, doing a good job. Seth started out of position number eight and he's found his way to position number nine. But you would expect that with the, the bigger names. Bowles as well, also starting to push through the field as well. Jeff Bowles in the, uh, the number 24. Jeff started uh, out of seven and uh, he's, remains there. Royce Lynn, it's Brian Burke that is uh, pushing very, very hard indeed. In fact, just off the back of this battle, Burke has gone back a spot now, so the, the 50 has come through. Ash Rogers has come through there. There's Simon Schiff in that, as I terminal, termed it, the urban camouflage, and Royce Lynn right all over the back now in the Lynn contracting car what happened there with the number 27. He was definitely in third place, Brian Burke. There's not too many people that can say they've put Brian back a spot. Royce Lynn looking to the outside now. Simon Schiff covers it up tight there. Have a look at this. Jory has got through. That is a brilliant move. Great bit of race car driving there by Alex Jory. He's, he's been pushed yet. wide. Yes, he's held him out there. I said it was a great bit of driving by Jory. Jesse Bryan backs it up and maintains his position one in the race, but for how long? That is brave stuff. Hanging on, ultimately surrenders. So Jory is moving around. This is good. He can put the car wherever he wants and he's not losing ground to Jesse at the moment, but he looks to the outside. This is not going to work unless he can really flow the car and do the double back. Great support from Garagistic. The, uh, the BMW series over many, many seasons now. And of course, Liqui Moly jumping on board with the series throughout last year. The Yokohama control tyres as well. Here we go, coming onto the straight. Looks like Royce is having a look again to overtake into fourth. Here's a look at Royce Lynn, Brian Burke. Something not quite right inside that Spearmint car, Spearmint coloured car. And he has now got that spot as they go down into turn one, three wide, they fan out, Royce Lynn ends up getting pushed wide. And up the inside, Simon Schiff, he's not gonna gain a spot, but certainly gain some ground because Royce Lynn lost some ground there in the number four to the 27 of Brian Burke. Coming out of turn two now, jamming that throttle to the absolute boards. Jesse Bryan now, let's see as we go down into turn four in the front of this race. He looks wide again, as does the number 50. This is Ash Rogers looking to the outside. Burke has got the spot back. So Burke into P3 has fought back. But for how long? We have a good look back now to Shannon Cooper and uh, the number 57, Daryl O'Neill. Shannon just hasn't worked on his car, so he's, he's just breaking in over these first few races. See Shannon, Shannon back in the number 90, and 
Darrell O'Neill as well. These guys qualified in positions 10 and 12 and uh, currently sitting in 11 and 12 on the track with Jess Bell just up the road. In fact, she's right around the corner up in front now. She's gone through. Royce Lynn, a move on Ash Rogers. Will he make it stick? Ash Rogers runs very wide there. Royce Lynn's being pushed the a long way around. Simon Schiff, bit of a tail gun opportunity here. Or is he just going to sit back and go, oh, this is not going to work out, guys. You're not going to get all the way around to the straight side by side, or are they? They're going to give it a go. Royce Lynn gets pushed wide. Great bit of racing. What a fantastic bit of competition between those two drivers. The Battle Royale is on. Fantastic bit of racing couple of gentlemen drivers there doing a fantastic job. Simon Schiff down the inside shows the nose on Royce Lynn. Royce has got the brave pills in today, but he loses the spot ultimately to Ash Rogers. And Royce Lynn just ducks back in one spot. Simon Schiff there scratching his head going, I don't know how, uh, how much harder I can try to get amongst this battle. Yeah, I thought he had it for a minute, but um, that it was pushed too wide for too long. Great effort. Hey Martin, you want to get out of this, don't you? You're, you're, you're towing to get amongst this action, aren't you? Roll cage goes in in the next couple of weeks, <laughs> and then I'm on. It's going to be great fun. Yeah, I can see you getting getting uh, getting yourself ready to join the action. That was some magnificent driving by two guys operating at a very very high level out there. Great concentration, great spatial awareness that they could come around onto the straight here at Phillip Island side by side with each other. Have a look at this. This is the absolute pulse of the race here, out in front. Jesse Bryan has led every lap. We're coming down around now to complete lap number six. So you can see, you can just see that Alex Jory's going to stick the car up either way. Oh, he's he's got a it. tank slapper on. He's managed to gather it up. <laughs> Amazing car control. He goes down well one spot. He had to throw it at it. He had to throw the farm at it to try and get Jesse Bryant with only a number of corners left in this race. He did it. He did it in a 1% spot on the track. There's probably other places, but he backed himself. And at the end of the day, he caught what could have been a really nasty tank. Stuff. Yeah, I was picturing a, a pirouette going on there, but he did a brilliant job to pull it back. He did. And Brian Burke plays the patience game ultimately over the last couple of laps. And we'll see Jesse Bryan take the race win in car number 38 to the line there. Brian Burke has found some great pace on the last lap. Alex Jory will remain wondering what went in. And then we've got Rogers and Lynn. And what was the gap there? That was 0 .04, 0 .04 of a second. Gee, two weeks ago in the 944 challenge at the state round, we had 0 .01 of a second, but that was for the race win. Rogers and Lynn was for positions four and five on the road. Simon Ship home in sixth place there. As we see, the battle's still raging. There's the triple six, Trebeski with Knight in front, 86. Peter Knight qualified with a 2.0189. Our pole sitter qualified with a 153.2. So a little bit of a gap there, some newer comers as- uh, Shannon Martin. and Daryl fighting for that place. There it is, they uh, regularly do it, those two. Battle it out for uh, that place. Regularly see each other out on the racetrack together. Good on you, Adam, finishing your first race. Fantastic, Mom. isn't it? That'll be you in a few weeks' time. <laughs> that, that's going to be you, Martin. Hoping I finish my first race. Totally. Step <laughs> one, finish. There's the result. If you could just run us through them, Martin, on the end of that race. Yeah, Jesse Bryan, congrats for coming first. Bryan Burke couldn't be much closer behind. And then Alex, what a, what a run from Alex. Clearly those uh, XLs gave him massive training. That's great work. Followed by Ashley, Ashley Rogers. Um, so I've mixed up, the, mixed up the order there. We've got Ro Royce came in, came in number five. Congratulations, Royce. Uh, Simon Schiff. Done a, done a terrific job there. So, Martin, thank you very much for your time here this afternoon to uh, lend us some of your enthusiasm for the BMW E30 racing. Of course, there's another race uh, this afternoon starting at 4.30, then 9.10 tomorrow, and then 12.05. So plenty of racing for the uh, E30s this weekend. Yeah, a couple of days at Phillip Island. You can't go wrong with some racing down here, and we're looking forward to being part of it. And uh, thanks for the invitation to come up and talk. It's been great. Excellent. Thanks for joining us, Martin. We'll take a quick break here, and we have got the Excels on track for their first race for the Masters over eight laps. Back in a moment.
Welcome back. XL's on track now for the Hyundai XL Racing Association of Victoria here at March Access. Brought to you by the Phillip Island Auto Racing Club and broadcast to the world on Blendline TV via YouTube. Tuned in anywhere around the world. A very, very big welcome to the Phillip Island Grand Prix circuit. We've already had the Porsche Michelin Sprint Challenge qualifying session. We've just had a fantastic BMW E30 race and of course just in that little package before we saw Royce Lynn who has graduated through to the BMW E30s and has had his first race in the E30s after spending a season or so in the XLs and that seems to be the way you come to the XLs, spend some time and uh, see where your racing career takes you or you can be like some of the gentlemen racers do in the XL Masters race number one which is what is on track now, David Musgrave, the Victorian, leads the way to Adam Bywater in car number 83. Antonio Vinia in the 44. And Tim Rouse, a guy that has been around a long, long time from down there in Gippsland, Warrigal direction. Raced uh, saloon cars very, very successfully. Produces a few XLs these days as well. Larry Merriweather, front runner in the All-State Conveyors. Car number seven out of position number five, Daniel Webster in the Racing Image Motorsport. Martini Heads, versatile design. 35, Carl Nielsen in the 86. I'll be going for him, the Napa Auto Parts Racing Academy. Of course, Napa Auto Parts have their fantastic podcast, the Grassroots Racing Podcast, and you can catch that on all of your podcast outlets. So going for the number 86. Let's see how he goes. The 911. Mark Pesavento, the Mojo Motorsport outfit. Then it's Donovan Mergeback in the 92, working his way up through the field. Michael Jeffs in the number 30 out of 10. Gav Newman in the three. Then it's Neil Hasler in the 77. Troy Jeffs in the 42. Number 127, the Martin Barton, sorry, Michael Barton entry. Ed Narquitz in the number 29 out of 15. Number 16 on the grid will be John O'Keefe. Dallas Harvey is next with David Sharp. Number 19 spot on the grid will we go to car number 24, Jared and Bell. Then we have Joseph Austin Crow and Glenn McKenzie rounding out our field in the XL Masters race number one. The field being broken down into Masters and Trophy racing here this weekend. So we've got this Masters race, then we'll go into the first race for the Victorian Sports Cars series, and that will be uh, much looking forward to. Then the XL Trophy race. New South Wales Super Sports will be fantastic. They were awesome in qualifying. And then the final race for the day will be the BMW E30s. Tomorrow we'll open up with the E30s and the XL Masters for their second race of the weekend. Eight laps will be the journey in this one. And uh, the cars slowly making their way around onto the grid. I want to get a bit of a move on. There has been times where uh, laps have been cut because cars have taken a fair while to get round to the grid. But Adam Bywater in the PFD Food Surfaces entry, a car that knows its way around the Phillip Island Grand Prix circuit on its federal tyres and its super, super shock package. Tim Rouse right behind the Rouse Motors beyond blue car number 81. Got someone very eager on the accelerator down there, giving it the uh, the valve bounce before we get underway. And if that's uh, anything to go by, we're going to have a torrid affair over the next eight laps. We don't want valve bouncing. Sometimes the red mist will come down. The Napa Auto Parts car number 86 for the Napa Auto Parts Racing Academy. Out of position number seven, Carl Nilsson. Give me a good eye on him. Works for Napa Auto Parts during the week. Oh, see if we can see. And away we go. Side by side, almost come together off the grid. Three rows, Matt Hasler in the number 27 joins the row in front of him. Goes right between the 92 and the 30 of Michael Jeffs and Donovan Mergeback. But have a look at the two lead cars. 83 and 34. Tim Rouse right in behind the 81. Looks like he's going to be wicked keeping here a little bit. A little bit of a gap between them. They'll come back together as they get into turn number two. Tim Rouse shows the nose. The Gippsland racer. There's the 86 for the Napa Auto Parts Racing Academy. Right around the outside there. The field get away through off the start line. Very, very well indeed. Through one, through two. They head down. 
very, very, very fast turn number three. There's the one three five in the mix there down there. John Keefe started out of position 16. Adam Bywater now has the lead in this race over David Musgrove. Tim Rouse in P3. Looks very nicely indeed there. Musgrove just showing the car left and right in the mirrors. Very experienced XL racer. They come under the bridge. Up through the hay shed here, getting a good look at the number three, Jeff New uh, Gavin Newman. Made up a couple of spots off the start. There's the superior food services car. Car number 30, Michael Jeffs. Mid-pack at the moment. That's where the action is in XL Racing. Troy Jeffs right behind. So is this a bit of a family affair? Do they give each other plenty of room or do they get, get jiggy with it? Help each other along or hinder as whatever may be the case. 35, Daniel Webster. Sweeping around out of grid position number six. It's gone back a spot or two in the mix here. They fan out onto the straight now. Line astern with each other. They finish the first lap. Adam Bywater, David Musgrove, Tim Rouse, and Tony Venier. Then we've got Merriweather. Started out at five, has gone up to, uh, stayed in five. Number six is uh, Nielsen, the number seven car. No, sorry, the number 86 car has come out of seventh. He's already up to sixth. Donovan Mergebacks out of nine, up to seven there on the first lap. So some movers, the 86 and the 92. They started out of driver's right of the grid too. So they've managed to get through there. And our race lead has changed. David Musgrove has gone through on Bywater. But Bywater's got the inside running for turn four. Dips it in. Tim Rouse, I don't think is sitting back watching. I just think Tim is trying very, very hard to stay with them at the moment. He's got himself maybe one or two car legs gap to the car in P4, which is uh, Larry Merriweather. Larry Merriweather doing a, a good job starting out on position five, up to fourth on the road now. The entire field line astern with each other. Some great racing being shown here. Been some tricky times for the XL races over the last uh, couple of race meetings. But the uh, XL Masters race number one looks to be very good indeed. The number 11 of McKenzie. Vacation to Caravan's car goes through. Then McKenzie started rear of grid and he's already climbing up through the field. Famous turn 12, Belinda's Terrace, as it was known all those years ago. Ask your dad what Belinda's Terrace was. Maybe even grandpa was that long ago. And they come streaming across the line. Bywater to Musgrove. Bywater has a slim, slim margin. Gets down the straight. Got some good straight line handling on the Bywater car. Musgrove to Tim Rouse, Larry Mer Merriweather. Big move there. Antonia Benia started out of P3, back to five at the moment. Carl Nielsen started out of eighth in the Napa Auto Parts entry. Check out the Napa Motorsport Academy. Some great advice there for all race drivers and uh, some really good advice for those just starting out. You can see that at the Napa Auto Parts.com.au website, the uh, Napa Motorsport Academy. Jump on and have a listen to the Grassroots Racing uh, podcast that they do there as well. Really, really good uh, good stories from uh, some, some storied and well-known motorsport identities. Eight laps the journey. Still got six laps to go here for the XL Masters. Bywater has got himself... Oh, he's had the lead for the best part of half a lap now. Over Musgrove. Tim Browse in the, in the mix there. Tim will certainly remain right in the mix get a good shot of the mid-pack. This is Hasler leading Pesavento, Newman, Michael Jeffs and McKenzie. Good push there from uh, Glenn McKenzie. Started out at 21, is up to 11. There's Hasler. The 
number 77. This is the, the fight, I guess, to get inside the 10. The 77 there of Hasler is in ninth. The 911, Pesavento. There's a 911 in an XL race. That's a clear advantage. I'll leave that one with you. So Pesavento goes through Newman. And we're getting a good look at the number three now. That's Newman. Gavin Newman started out of 11 and has held place in 11, although there's been a few dive around left and right. As we see the sports cars making around. Ben Shoots in that 996 there. It'd be great to see the guy that clean swept last year's championship in the Sin, jumping on board an older cup car here this weekend. So stay tuned for the sports car race coming up. Up next, here we go now. This is that mid-pack again. Newman, 11. Jeffs. Michael Jeffs started out of 10th uh, and back into 12th now, so some work to do for car number 30. And this is right there. There's the 127 as well. Barton weighing in on it. That's how many cars there are available racing around here in Victoria at the moment with the uh, Excels dives up the inside under the 42, just about gets under the guard. But Troy Jeffs hangs on, or does he? Vacation of Caravan's car holds on. And Jeffs just, just hanging on to it. So 127 and Michael Barton lives to go another day. Is the battle for 10th Pesavento all over the back of Neil Hasler in the number 77. The Pesavento car looks fantastic. Great looking race car. They've done really good with delivery. And you get the feeling that the 77 is uh, as they as they drove them off the production line in that uh, claret red sort of colour. The uh, grey under half. The, the Mojo number 911 the goods, Mojo Motorsport. Sweeps around. Now got hands full with uh, Gavin Newman coming at him. So uh, they'll go side by side. Here's at the front of the race. Four laps left. Half race distance now completed. And it will be Musgrove that goes through on Bywater. There's Tim Rouse still hanging in there. Just behind Tim is Larry Merriweather in the number seven. Larry's done a good job, started out of fifth, got to fourth early on, and this front pack in the, uh, the Masters race have got themselves a very, very clear and distinct advantage. 3.5 seconds the gap back to Mania and uh, merge back. Side by side, under brakes, they line up minus two to get through turn four. Tim Rouse now is closer than he ever has been. The only issue for poor old Tim is that Larry Merriweather coming right with him, right in his wheel tracks. In fact, the gap between all four of these cars is equidistant. They start the big climb up the hill. Let me tell you, in an XL, it's a big old hill to get up out of Siberia. And this is where the skill of the driver comes into it. Tim Rouse flowing the car, climbs all over the back of Adam Bywater. That's what you get when you flow an XL, the experienced racer, Tim Rouse right up onto the back of Bywater. But I tell you what, Bywater's got the car that's quick in a straight line, so he's got some good grunt on board to get up the hill. And Tim Rouse just giving us all a, a little bit of a lesson on how to link the corners up in a front wheel drive. Hyundai XL around the Phillip Island Grand Prix circuit. The gap now ever decreasing between car two and car three on the road, 34 and 81, battling it out. What it's doing now is it's giving David Merriweather a clear old opportunity. But have a look at this. The Bywater car in a straight line is an absolute jet. Pulls out of the slipstream, drives on by. Does he bring Tim Rouse with him? Tries to go with him. Rouse doesn't know who to call on here. He looks left for uh, Bywater and he looks right for Musgrove. And he just loses touch with it there. So Tim Rouse not being able to match... Let's call it the straight line handling of the two cars in front of him at the moment. A 
as the buzzing hornets come out of uh, turn number two there. Screaming little four cylinders. Pretty simple mechanical package. Not a whole lot that can be done, just some things in the name of reliability and serviceability. In these cars, oh, move back. Oh, sorry, that's the 29. That's uh, Narquitz. Goes round and gets almost caught up on the uh, dirt mound, mound there. Rejoins, bobbling away across the dirt there. The Blue Marlin pulls there. So that's Ed Narquitz and has left some debris in the grass there and uh, very keen to get back on with it. And uh, I would say maybe even a bit, bit of a uh, exhaust leak there as well. Great battle here. Have a look at this, the 86, the Napa Auto Parts car. Car number 92 just in front, the Donovan Merjack racer. And this is, uh, this is for six, seven and eight on the road. Neil Hasler is just back off the uh, off the back of this group. That's the group of Hasler, Pesvento, Newman and Jeffs. 86 now, all over the back of the 92, goes wide. Again, another brave move here, the 92 for Jackpot Racing. Gives a little bit of room and shuts the door on the exit of the corner there. Eases the car up onto the top line. But Carl Nielsen, the Napa. Motorsport Academy are blazing down the side of his car. Comes onto the straight here. We get back to the front of this race. This is Adam Bywater, Musgrove at the front. Tim Rouse still hanging in there for Rouse Motors and the Blonde Beyond Blue entry. Raising awareness for mental health and depression there. Fantastic. Thing there that uh, Tim Rouse is doing. His cars bobble their way down through turn three. The BL TV. Here we go. Here it is. This is the uh, the 29 of Ed Narkins going off there. And uh, gee, full bottle. There's the uh, trim from underneath the radiator. It gets dispatched. There was no harm, no foul. Digs a bit of uh, dirt out of the real estate and uh, takes a chunk of uh, lettuce along with him. Back to the pits later on for a uh, salad sandwich off the front of the car number 29. Up the hill they go. Race leader, David Musgrove. Have a look at Adam Bywater. Right in behind. Tim Rouse has just lost touch a little bit here. And back behind Tim Larry Merriweather has also lost touch. So he's racing at the front. Lap six, so the last lap, the fastest lap of the race was done by Adam Bywater. So yes, they're battling, but they're not letting the uh, lap times drop away too much. 201.02 was the uh, qualifying, so they've gone under that. The front two cars have gone under the uh, qualifying time. And our lead car, sorry, uh, the car in second was uh, Adam Bywater. He did the fastest lap last lap around, which he led. So if all things being equal, David Musgrove should come across the line this time. Have a look at that. Bywater pulls out again and drives on by. Uh, 2.016. So lost about a three quarters of a second on that one. Tim Rouse goes through. Last lap. The veteran. The wily veteran. Puts the nose down through on... David Musgrove. It was only three quarters of a lap ago that Musgrove got in the lead. He's now back into P3. As this race is titled the XL's Masters Race Number 1. Fantastic driving. Experienced race car drivers doing the very best they can in these cheap and cheerful, happy little Korean cars. Getting out on the racetrack and having a, uh, a ripping time. Some pretty serious racing as a result, Tim Rouse being pushed wide now by Merriweather. Uh, sorry, by Musgrove. Merriweather just off the back. Uh, sorry, Merrifield just off the back. Larry Merrifield. Apologise for calling Merriweather. Merrifield off the back there. This is our front three. You'd have to suggest on the last lap, this is where the battle for the line is going to be. Bywater. Out in front now for the PFD Food Service. Tim Rouse for Rouse Motors in P2. And then David Musgrove in P3. Is there going to be a, 
a big manoeuvre into MG, no, but there's some someone cracking it down through the gearbox. The 81 getting good drive now, but let me tell you, the PFD Food Services car number 83 being driven by Adam Bywater has got the straight line handling, but Tim Rouse looks to the outside. He's going to sweep this car nicely. Tim has been driving textbook front wheel drive laps in this race. Pulls out straight away. Bywater looking to come to the line hard and he does. But have a look in P2. David Musgroves looks for it but ultimately doesn't get it. The wind goes to Bywater. Tim Rouse drove a very clever race. Tail gunning for the entire distance until lap number eight pushed his message home for a result getting home in position two. David Musgrove, Larry Merrifield, Tony Abinier, Carl Nielsen, two spots up in the Napa Auto Parts, Napa Motorsport Academy, car number 86. Donovan Mergevac, good move there. Then Webster, Neil Hasler rounds out the nine. And it will be Gavin Newman in car number three, rounding out the ten for the first of the Masters race. Pesavento, Jeff's. Michael Jeffs, that is. But Glenn McKenzie, good drive there for Glenn, coming ultimately home in 14th space. Place, Troy Jeffs, Ed Narkwitz, who was up a lot higher in the race, had that uh, off at turn number two, on the exit of turn number two. Here comes the uh, 161 of Dallas Harvey onto the straight, charging down to get the checkered flag. O'Keefe, Sharp, Harvey, and Belt. And Joseph Austin Crow rounds out our XL race number one for the XL Masters as the cars head off. And there it is, confirmation. Bywater to Rouse, Musgrove, Larry Merrifield, Vanier, Carl Nilsson, Donovan Mergeback, Daniel Webster, Neil Hasler, and Gavin Newman rounding out the 10. Mark Pesavento to Jeff Spartan, McKenzie, Troy Jeffs, Ed Narkwitz, John O'Keefe. David Sharp, Dallas Harvey, and Gerald Anbelt. We will see the XL Masters on track again tomorrow morning at 9.40. Up next here at Pyark's very own March Access event will be the uh, sports cars race. Looking forward to this, a 3.15 scheduled start for the first race of the Victorian Sports Car Championship. We'll be back in a moment.
production sports car racing victoria if you'd prefer to spend more time racing your sports car than just thinking about it this is the new home for sports cars this might be what you're looking for the tracks they're going to be racing at here phillip island this weekend winton the 29th and 30th of april the bend 27 28 of may phillip island one day race meeting here on the 20th of August, then Winton, 16th, 17th of September. A very happy new home for the Victorian production sports cars or the Victorian sports car series and some absolute awesome cars. It is very much class based and uh, this is certainly the new way of going. Multiple classes, class A, class B, C, D, E, F, S and X. We'll get through the iterations or the, uh, the different aspects of that as this weekend goes by. I'm Darren Smith. I've been joined by Jack Atley. Jack, let's have a uh, look at the grid for the first race for uh, this new series. Fantastic to be here, Darren. Absolutely sensational looking place this afternoon. Where else would you rather be than one of the best tracks in the world? The weather gods have been very kind to us this afternoon. A lot, a lot of breeze and the sun is shining. I spoke to Jamie Lovett earlier today who's uh, on pole there. He was really happy with his pole lap. Um, in fact, we hit a PB for his pole lap, so he's got real pace in the car, of course. He's got plenty of opposition around him, though. Andrew Hall, I know, is in a strong position there, and I'm definitely looking forward to seeing what the Audi can do in uh, coming out of second place on the front row. Yeah, car number eight, the Audi driven by Michael Coconos, who has had some national experience over the last 12 months, joined, came out of the Victorian sports car scene, joined the uh, Fanatec Australian GT Championship, yeah. and uh, was certainly... Did a good job there in the uh, in the class as well. I think he actually won the class there. We've touched on Anthony Hall in the 130, and let's give Anthony Hall and David Stilwell a massive round of applause for working so very hard right through the off-season to piece this all together. Steve Kepper, a guy that has been very, very good in his Porsche, and it looks to, for all intents and purposes, to be a Porsche benefit, but there are many other cars chucked in through this field. George... Constance down there in car number 12 as well. So looking forward to seeing how George can come out of there. Ben Schutz, the guy that won every single sports car race in the Victorian Championship last year. He's in a 996. And he is down the field there. Broke a drive shaft in qualifying. Only got a couple of laps into the 139.89. Don't worry about him. Sunil Baha in the mix there in the 447. That is from. Uh, Ethcom Motorsport, the 9972, a cup car, revs rise, and away we go, and we are underway, down the straight we go, Ben Schutz has got away beautifully as you'd expect, and the number seven absolutely comes blasting through the field, Rowan Little in the old IROC, three and a half litre, air-cooled car comes charging, the purple car absolutely braining them off the field, came from position number 15, Let's have a look at where he's come up to. There he is. Unbelievable performance here. Fantastic performance. I noticed a lot of the guys got quite a bit of wheel spin off the line there. The temperature is starting to heat up this afternoon, and these guys really want to warm up the tyres. You're coming through now into the far section of the race track. Bound into turn three. The top guys will hit here over 200 k's an hour through that corner there before the hard brakes down into the hairpin. The old Honda corner or Casey Stoner corner or Jack Miller corner, as we call it even now. But... Um, you're hard on the brakes and then you really want to drive it out of this corner down to the bottom into Siberia. As you say, coming around Casey Toner there with car number 27, which is uh, William Timms in the Mark Mustang, the Mark II entry there as well. There goes Rowan Little and a great sounding Porsche. Really does, it sounds different, doesn't it, to these later iterations of cars. But over the years, time doesn't weary them, does it, the Porsche Mark? It certainly... Uh, comes on and I guess this has a little bit of a feel yes it is the production sports or the Victorian sports car series but it has a little bit of a feel to it like the old Porsche Cup days where you sure. had many many different uh, models of Porsches but this is certainly open to many many different cars class A cars the FIA GT3 or similar GT style cars must comply with recent balance of performance requirements as set by the Australian GT and SRO Motorsport Motorsport Australia documents a1 is the FIA GT3 2015 and on, currently available. The Audi R8, R8s, Mercedes AMG, GTs, McLaren 650S, Porsche GT3R, the 911 version, the Lambo Huracan BMW M6, 
Ferrari 488 Bentley Continental. Mate, if you can't find something that pushes a, your buttons there. Not a bad range of cars, that one, is it? Just and that's quietly. just Class A and Class uh, A1, 2 and 3. Class B <laughs> is your... Uh, is your lap time bracket production sports endurance series cars, MGB, GT, V8s, which we see doing big things in the uh, MG series in uh, the Victorian series, the S550 Mustang, which there is one here this weekend running out there as well. So we'll catch up with uh, with that car throughout this weekend as well. The uh, the Chevy Corvettes, Lotus Elise, the Siege, there's one of them for, uh, for everyone around the place as well. Then we've got different time brackets. Class C, your, your Porsche GT3 Cup cars and variants, excluding 992 Cup cars. Um, you know, no uh, no paddle shift or ABS in those cars as well. We've got Sven Boycott's 997 GT3 Cup S here this weekend. So Sven is currently uh, didn't get on the grid for this race, so uh, he hasn't made it out but you'll know the car once he makes it out in racing later on in the in the series class d of course is uh, to the porsche cayman mclaren 570s the uh, amg gt4 ktm crossbow aston martin v8s super G gr supras bmw m4s etc there then your holden monaros mustangs audi tt's Toyota 86s mx5s rx8s etc class f is on oh. treaded tires as we've got some cars stopped up down there at MG. Looks like Tim's there has got in pretty hot with Merrill. Um, Billy Mer Merrill there, Marilly there. You can, you will uh, lose it. They've come off there at the bottom of Lukey Heights. You come over the top of Lukey Heights there, hard on the brakes. It's a really tight right-hander and uh, you can collect a competitor there. You look like he's dived under there to um, gain an advantage. Um, and I think you'll get a, a uh, five second, or you'll get you'll probably get a penalty for that, potentially five second penalty for that well, kind of Michael thing. Well, Michael Kokonos has just been announced car eight that uh, started off the front row of the grid will yep. be getting a, uh, a five second penalty. This is the sorry, this is actually the Mark Three, the newest of the uh, the Mark cars, and uh, that has been parked up. So we saw the uh, the 170 involved. Yeah, it's a shame. It's a magnificent, beautiful-looking car, but uh, he's pulled over to the side of the track there. It looks like the right rear's gone off that car. I'd say they've been tapped. They're really tight spot coming out of the bottom of Lukey Heights. You're looking towards the bridge, and from the bridge, you are flat to the board all the way through onto Turn 12, where you really want to get that long slipstream down the straight. So it's a uh, really key braking point at the bottom of Lukey Heights and uh, the boys have hit a bit of trouble. There it is, confirmation, five seconds, car five, false start, a five second penalty. Thank you very much to the guys at Glenline TV for keeping us up to date for all of that here at March Access, brought to you by the Phillip Island Auto Racing Club, PIARC, as it's known around the world. And that's what's written all over the, uh, the uh, shirts of the, uh, the members that run these fantastic, great race winnings. Andrew Hall now has got the blue headlights of the launch Audi behind him and uh, Troy and the guys from the Melbourne Performance Centre look to be bringing a few more Audis in the uh, in the very near future to this series. It's really good to see uh, MPC and uh, some Audis coming along. Andrew Hall of course Cup Car Engineering in P2 but I guess the biggest problem for Andrew and for uh, for Michael at the moment is the fact that Jamie Lovett has just whizzed off into the distance. A 132.57 would have had him qualifying in the top five for the, uh, the uh, challenge race uh, for this weekend. So that's the sort of pace that Jamie Lovett's bringing to it. That's quick. That, that is a stunning lap. 132s, you are really on the pace. You're hitting, you're, you're well north of 270 kilometres an hour as you're heading down the straight here. And there's actually quite a dip. For people who haven't been to Phillip Island, at the end of the straight, it's very undulating circuit all round. But at the very end of the straight, there's quite a drop down. So you will pick up an extra five or ten kilometres an hour before you sweep through turn one and the apex alone at turn one you're clocking 200 kilometres an hour so these are really high speed but when you look at the the Porsches there and the Audis they're just made to flow and they they love running out on these tracks I mean spreading their wings and really just um, seeing what these cars are capable of doing. Yeah these fast European cars the sort of track they're made for have a look at this the Audi looks to the inside now on Andrew Hall for Cup Car Engineering He's got none other than Jason Dunstan making that car fast for him this weekend. They combine very, very well. Jason Dunstan, multiple Australian GT championships working on the VI Pit Foods Porsche 
Of course, the McLaren there as well. A very, very experienced mechanic. Have a look at this. Ooh. Kokonos to the inside of three. Gets the job done, actually, before arriving at three. Gets it on the exit of two. So, Andy Hall. I've got to say, Andy Hall is probably just feeling a little bit weary about now. He's worked exceptionally hard to get this these cars to the track and get the category up and running. And I would suspect that uh, he's going to sleep very, very well tonight, knowing that everyone's here and they've put on a really good show so far. Have a look at this. Here's the number seven. This is the car of Rowan Little, the uh, Red Rock Porsche IROC series car. And it stands out. It's not. Oh. It's more of that upright cabin style of 911, the the iconic shape that is the, the 911 and beautiful. that massive whale tail off the back of it there. Yeah, beautiful. And, and so well balanced. So they're just made to handle really really well i mean that's the the beauty of porsches they do everything very very well i've got to say they brake well they steer well and they handle magnificently as well but of course the rear engine of these cars makes the balance of these cars so fantastic and um, i mean there's de different versions of cars throughout the field that's what's one of the interesting points you've got engines in different locations but with that rear wheel rear engine car i should say um, that's going to give it um, a beautiful handling and a beautiful drive out of Siberia there as we head up towards the hay shed. Michael Stilwell in car number 60 as well in number position number 13. This car's been campaigned over many a season. Have a look at this. Great battle. We're taking uh, decades apart here of, uh, of technology. As Rowan Little in the Red Rock car driving very, very nicely indeed. The number 99 isn't mucking around either. They come out at Simon Zettel in the Inglo Networks 997 Series 2 GT3 Cup car. Have a look at the uh, pace this purple car has got. In fact, as it comes down the straight this time, Jack and I are going to try and be quiet and just have a listen to this car because it sounds magnificent. Yeah, <laughs> wow. Mulsanne straight. 1981, 82. <laughs> How cool was that? Absolutely sensational. It's uh, I, you wouldn't want to have a radio in your car, would you? Because that is the best soundtrack of all time. I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure it'd just be on the static channel anyway, so you could hear the revs coming through the uh, through the speakers. But yeah, agreed. Magnificent car, and Rowan just gets out there and races it. Yeah, beautiful. I mean, that, that's you know the fantastic part about Phillip Island as well. You've got different categories of cars, but it's very interesting to see the different styles of cars. Um, and you know the flow of the circuit and how certain cars gain certain advantages in certain areas. I guess um, there's really three key sections of this car of this circuit. I should say you've got the long drag down this really fast straight, sweeping corners, the hairpins at Honda, and then you've got the drive all the way up the back straight through um, past the hay shed. You, you are flat to the boards. I can tell you all the way up through that section. So that is a real quick section of track. And then you're hard on the brakes down into Lukey Heights. And again, you want to flow the car into the real key corner on this track, which is turn 12. And from there, you're just going to sit back and enjoy the beautiful view of that straight. George Constas now doing a, a tremendous job. There's Ben Schutz in number 78, Cup Car Engineering entry. And uh, this was a last minute call up for Ben. He was uh, not going to be racing much this year, won last year's championship. In fact, he won it. Boy, did he win it every single race. Lights to flag, he won it in the Richard Bendel owned Sin. And uh, now he is strapping in this weekend. Fantastic that Andrew Hall has dragged out the old 996. I think this is actually an old VIP Pet Foods car. I might be. I might be corrected on that because Steve Sluger had one and Steve is with us uh, in the field here this weekend in the 991 Series 1 GT3 Cup car and uh, so uh, Steve's currently sitting there in position number 10 yeah. and uh, this is Ben Schutz who only sat in this car for the first time, never raced a Porsche ever until this morning, did practice in qualifying and now we're seeing the skill of the hands and feet of that guy as he has risen to position number five and Ben started out of position number eight. There was never any question that, that he was going to rise to the, near the top, but uh, doing a great job to keep these cars behind him. Car number 12, George Constas. George started out of position number five and finds himself now in position number six. And then we've got a new entry, Sunil Waho, in the FTAM Motorsport car for... I think that's Christian Fitzpatrick 
uh, Fitzgerald's car, sorry, that he is, uh, he's racing down there, the Evolved Technic car. This is the number 68 now as well, Stephen Sluger, who we were talking about. Brilliant operation, that Evolver, over in uh, Box Hill in Victoria, the Evolve uh, Performance Centre there, and uh, well linked with uh, Peter Fitzgerald, who's of course one of the all-time great racing drivers, certainly in the Porsche category uh, of Australian racing, so uh, he won, runs that operation out of Box Hill, the Evolve situation, so uh, yeah, they know how to tune a race car. Certainly, and Christian uh, as well, Christian Fitzgerald, Peter's son, uh, ex experienced Porsche racer as well, did some did some Porsche Michelin Sprint Challenge stuff last year and uh, has um, has found a, a way to um, team up with EMA and Manti Racing as well now. So uh, stay tuned to what those guys are going to be doing in the not-too-distant future as well. This car looks fantastic, doesn't it? Oh, Whoa! Ben shoots there, getting out over the back of the ripple strip there. In fact, I think something gone wrong there. A rare mistake from Ben Schutz. You may have just got on that ripple strip. As you go wide coming out of Siberia there, there's a fairly wide ripple strip which you will use and if you can get the rears on there, it can get a little bit light. Again, this car will get light coming over the top there of Lukey Heights. Down on the brakes, hard on the brakes. Now, when you get to that bridge from here, pretty much the bridge, you are flat to the boards all the way through here, sweeping through, moving up the gears, third, fourth, fifth. You'll top out fifth round about now flat to the boards, drive it through turn 12 and clock six gear just as we look to this bridge here and from here you really want to aim for those traffic lights which is about the centre of track uh, before you uh, dip down into turn one. Ben Sheets, as I said, first time ever sat in a Porsche, let alone a cup car, an older cup car as well. He'll be starting to get used to what this car does on lap one, lap four, lap six, whatever it might be and that's what he's just starting to feel out there. Very experienced racer, made his way into the motorsport world with his dad in the RX-7 via, well, via club cars and then in improved production back in the day. Still very active in the background with improved production and uh, has certainly had a lot of work for the Australian GT Championship on balance and performance as well. So motorsport is his life, Ben, and uh, has always, always had his dad in his corner and they work very, very well, whether it be with Richard Bendel or with Andrew Hall like they're doing this weekend. But have a look at this car in front, George Constas, a name not familiar with, and he's doing a tremendous job, and Bora as well, in behind this, Sunil Bora. Yeah, really fighting hard, up when um, you really want to um, yep, get the best out of the car at all times. So. Jamie Lovett jumps onto our screens on the last lap, and he has driven a ripping race, 9.42 second lead over Michael Kokonos to Andrew Hall, who is right in behind, only a second or so further back. But Andy, love it. Have a look at this. Car looks poised. Volvo Technic right across the front screen there of all of these cars. Great to have such uh, a, a fantastic series sponsor on board with the uh, with these guys. Their first time out or uh, their first hit out. And of course, you can catch up with everything that's going on with uh, this category with Andy Hall and Robin Bailey. But Jamie Lovett, this is an emphatic signal to the field, isn't it? Yeah, he's at the top of his game. You can see that. He's just flowing the car beautifully. There's no problems, no concerns. He's heading towards the line, but he's got this race well under control with a sort of nine second lead. So he's been in a great spot all weekend. And as I said, I spoke to him today. He was happy with qualifying. He's happy with the car. And this is the result. UMS support down the side of the car. The series with Evolve Technic support as well, where you want to get your car tuned and get it tuned well. Get down and see Christian and the guys at Evolve Technic. They put their money where their mouth is for this series. And have a look at this, Jamie Lovett will take first blood for the 2023 production sports car racing, the Victorian sports car series. It's a championship, independent series been created this year for those who own and love their, their race cars and love to race them and do so with the culture best described as competitive camaraderie. Racing with your mates is what it's all about. Owner drivers is what it's all about here, Jack, in this uh, in this series. For and sure. uh, it looks like you're getting a little bit towy, mate. You're, you're, the 944 career <laughs> is uh, just getting pushed to a side. You're, you're mate, looking at a 911, eh? Phillip Island and Porsches don't don't get me started, mate. Absolutely. We would all be love to be out there. Any chance you could get, without a doubt, any time you can drive a Porsche on a racetrack is always a good day. I tell you what, the Pit Lane Clothing Company 
The world's fastest fashion brand. Blazing down the side of any Porsche. That makes me a happy man. Uh, probably makes you twice as happy. But, uh, <laughs> strapping on the helmet in a Porsche and going racing. Kind hey, words. But it's always great to be out there racing amongst friends and amongst colleagues. And just the competition of it. I mean, that's why we all do it. We love the challenge of the place and we love the, the challenge of the racing. And w whether you're first or last, quite frankly, um, you know, it's all about competing, doing your best. And um, if you can pick up some silverware at the end of it, you know, even better. Well, here we go, the final results. Confirming that we have Jamie Lovett as the win, Mock Kokonos, Andrew Hall, Stephen Kepper, George Constance, then we go to Ben Schutz for his debut in a Porsche. Sunil Bar, great result there into position number seven. He'll be absolutely wrapped. Car number 70, Andrew Smith coming into, uh, into position. Not too sure about that one, but uh, Anthony Fontino and Simon Zettel rounding out the top 10, then we go to Steven Sluger, Rowan Little in the number 7 who had a ripping start, and Michael Stilwell, Bill Morrell, Wayne, uh, Will Timms and Sven Burkhardt didn't start, but uh, the DNF there for Morrell and Timms. Jack Atley, thank you so much for your time mate, lending your uh, expertise to the race call, and of course, where else do you go to look the best at the racetrack? Pit Lane Clothing Company. You always look brilliant, mate. You're dressed to the nines here, and it's uh, fantastic to have had you here. Kind words, Darren. Sensational to be here. Thanks very much. We'll be back very, very soon. We've got another XL race coming your way. Just going to take the pulse of the race meeting, the XL Trophy race. If your pulse doesn't get up, and if your pulse hasn't been racing with that sports car race, then the XLs will certainly do it. We'll be back in just a couple of moments.
excited to be taking the leap up to Kura Cup. I've done a season in sprint challenge, plus the two rounds in 21 before COVID shut down. So it's definitely the next step in my career. It will be a big step, but I'm ready for the challenge. Uh, for my goals for the year is basically just have a really good year, learn a lot. Obviously all the tracks I basically haven't been to except for three. So just progressively getting better. If I can be consistently up in the top 10, I'd be absolutely stoked for my first year. I love the livery. I've never had a pink car before and I can say I definitely really like it. All the sponsors and BWT on the side, it looks amazing. I can't wait to see it on track. So first and foremost, just watching Courtney drive out of pit lane at Albert Park will put a, a smile on my dial for sure uh, that she's arrived and she's ready to race. But I think for this year, there'll be tracks that she hasn't been to, Darwin, uh, Darwin, Townsville. So learning the tracks and just gaining experience and I guess improving her feel of the 992, which is a change for her coming from 991. So she's ready to hit the ground running in 2024. As a factory dealership and having, I guess, that long-standing motorsport DNA that we do, I feel that like any business, you should be mentoring and bringing in the future. And Courtney's a big part of that. I've followed her career for many years and I think we're the perfect environment to nurture her, to get her through her initial year and really be super competitive next year. So the overall team looks really good for 2023. Clearly Courtney coming on board is going to have some fantastic people around her. Nick McBride, for example, has been doing Career Cup now for several years, uh, four years with us, and I get to work with him for a second year. So I'm really hoping that Nick can part all of his wisdom, his race experience through to Courtney, uh, as well as having people like Mark Senior and Matt Belford around her as well, who are very successful people in their own business world or in their own right. So all the ingredients are there for a really exciting year. Hyundai XLs uh, sitting in the marshalling area. This is the trophy race. So we've had the Masters race, which was uh, Adam Bywater and Tim Rouse doing a ripping job. We're about to uh, embark on what is going to be the trophy race. So uh, as you'd suggest, Masters is the more experienced, let's call them uh, race driver, going out there for a race, the trophy class, you would have to suggest, is all about racing for that big bit of silverware at the end of the weekend. So the XL Trophy race number one is what we uh, are just waiting to get out on track. Of course, you're tuned in to PIARC, the Phillip Island Auto Racing Club March Access event. Close to the public, but certainly, a, uh, I'm going to have to say, one of Victoria's first ever for TV only it probably is the first ever for TV only event that's been live streamed around the world. So uh, fantastic to be part of that. That's what's on this weekend. Pyark have their hill climb on the 23rd of April, then on the 29th and 30th of April, the first super sprint down here, or sorry, second super sprint, round two, 26, 27, 28 of May. Make sure you get down here trackside for the Victorian State Circuit Racing Championship. It will be absolutely massive. The first round was two weeks ago at Sandown. 300 plus entries right across your sports sedans, Formula Ford, Formula V, XLs, BMWs, HQs, MG and invited British racing cars, the 944s that put on just a ripper. One of the finishes of their races, 0 0.010 between first and second. So plenty of racing going on at the Victorian State Circuit Racing Championships and they'll be here at Phillip Island on the 27th and 28th 
of May. Stay tuned to www.piarc.com.au or www.vsrs.com.au for all of the news on that event. Piarc's round, Super Sprint round number three is on here the 8th and 9th of July. August access, very similar style of event to uh, this one we've got here. Might try and get some information about who is uh, on the on the schedule there for that one. Then we've got Pyark Super Sprint round number four. So Super Sprint being your, your real grassroots end of uh, end of motorsport where you're, you're out on track with multiple cars racing the clock, not each other, and really is a great way to enter the competitive environment of out and out circuit racing. And then Island Magic, the uh, the schoolies for race drivers at the end of the year, 24, 25, 26 of November. Let's have a look at the XLs. So XL's on track now as they, uh, well, they're lining up at pit exit. Harry Tompkins will be uh, the one on pole. They're doing a lot of racing over the last few weeks. In fact, I think it was down in Tassie racing with the Speed Series as a support there. With the XL's at uh, Simmons Plains just last weekend as we saw the first round of the Speed Series go live down in the Apple Isle. As Harry Tompkins leads out the field, he'll have James Lodge right alongside Toby Waghorn. Actually, it might have been Toby Waghorn that was down in Tassie Racing now that I think of it. Down there racing in the, X, X, uh, in the XLs. Brad James in car number 61. Ethan Greg Galt will be looking to uh, take car number one out of P number five to the very front, I would suggest, in the first couple of corners, Jalen Robotham trying to do the same, I would suggest. Bill Sala in the uh, red and white XL for the Roadworthy Centre will come out of position number 7 in car number 36, Devin Nichols in the 1-2-3 and Jake Harwood qualified ninth with a 203-9-4 in car number 95, 641 of Caleb Efren from New South Wales a big welcome to Caleb qualified for the 204178 so uh, fair way off the pace of Harry Tompkins who did a 15964 by the way the only one to qualify in uh, in for the 159th all by himself down there we jump back to Josh Sacco Treethan uh, Tree and Kajanis Lockie Harvey Matt Dink Chris Harris and Ashton Paddock round out the field in car number 13 out of position number one for uh, Adam Macro Racing. Adam Macro, of course, needs very little introduction. Uh, Formula Ford champion, raced in supercars, raced in improved production in a very rapid 120Y as well. Was famous for that and did a uh, fantastic job there as well. Now presenting XLs in uh, XL Racing here for the, uh, the trophy series. Here is our track, the magnificent, beautiful, the best permanent racing facility here in Australia at the Phillip Island Grand Prix circuit. It is an absolute pleasure every time we arrive here to go racing. Miller Corner down there at turn number four. Some great shots out of the Porsche Michelin Sprint Challenge from Isla Magic last year. We go to five and six Siberia. And underneath the bridge across Lukey Heights, plunge down into M and G. And then the big acceleration. Pedal to the metal, hold it hard through the gearbox, out of turn 10, 11, 12. Don't go out of the back of the ripple strip and down the main straight. You're looking out at Tasmania, out over Bass Strait. And this weekend, Grand Ridge Brewery. I guess that's a little bit left over from last weekend's World Superbike Championship, the fantastic brewery up there in Merby North. There it is, the track, 4.45 kilometres around and looked like we were just about to go down to the San Remo Wharf to get some uh, fresh seafood for this afternoon. But instead we cast our eyes to Harry Tompkins, who is very slowly bringing the field around to uh, 
take up position on the grid. Car number 33. Island Magic saw Charlie Nash qualifying on the front row of the grid with Hugo Simpson, Hugo Simpson and Harry Tompkins, James Lodge and Toby Waghorn behind him. So we take out Charlie Nash and Hugo Simpson and we've got uh, exactly that grid lining up. Race number one was won by Toby Waghorn. Toby starting out of P3. Charlie Nash who is not an entrant entr this weekend. Harry Tompkins, Hugo Simpson and James Lodge rounded out race number one. So let's see how race number one rounds out. In fact, Toby Waghorn won all three races in the original finishing services entry. So uh, let's see how the number 84 original finishing services car of Toby Waghorn goes in this one. Very bright livery, grey over black over Day Glow Orange. The car act car right alongside car number 61 of Brad James. Red. Off. And away we go. Tompkins gets a bit of wheel spin but drives it away from the line nicely. Greg Galt in the AMR. Ash, uh, sorry, at a macro racing car. Matt Black looks to the inside, runs all the way down. Driver's right, looks for it to open up down into turn number one, but the number one car. Just stays line astern of Toby Waghorn. But it is going to be our pole sitter, Harry Tompkins. Car number 33 that leads them through. There goes Brad James in the 61. Looks to go right round the outside of Jalen Robotham. Jay's had a fantastic start. Jumping out of position number six. And that is a, a ripping start there. Here comes the number 61. Brad James fighting back to that spot. We've got cars one, two, three, and four on the road. The 33, Harry Tompkins, and it's the 139 of James Lodge. That's how they started on the front row, but they're being joined now by the next three rows on the grid. As they start to bank them up at, uh, at Siberia. This is where the, the skill of the Hyundai XL racer comes into it. Off the back of the ripple strip there, that will lose momentum. For Toby Waghorn going out over the back of the ripple strip. That will have halted the car. That will really fill the speed about now. And we're seeing it. Car number one comes through. Ethan Griggolt. So that's what it's all about. Flow the car. Fortunately for the 84 there of Toby Waghorn. He went off the back of the ripple strip. And it did bring car number one. And you don't get car one. You don't get the number one plate on your car without working very, very hard and knowing how to your setup and knowing how to work the car to its absolute advantage. Adam Macro Racing emblazoned down the side of the Ethan Griggold car number one. Everybody looks to car number one. How's he doing it? What's he doing? Through the inside now, the 61 of Brad James. Dislodges the one. Maybe it's the 61 we should all be watching for pace. Right out over the extreme left of the, of the track now. Driver's left. Kojnos and Nichols there in the mid-pack. Again, car one, Greg Galt pushes on through. Brad James and the 29 joins the party here. This is Jalen Robotham. Jay's a ripping driver in the number 29. Kept himself mostly out of any sort of troubles in his career and does a, uh, a tremendous job out there on track. This is the trophy race, lap two of eight lap journey and side by side down through turn number three are they going to go three wide into turn four no they don't 64 holds them off oh, sorry the 84 get a good look at the back of the star car there Harwood, Jake Harwood in the uh, the 95, go back up to the front here, Rick Galt, AMR across the top of the hill, holds the car very well, brings it back across, 
A little bit of a rear lock up there on the grid goal, number one. And very, very wide on the exit. Let's see if the 61 and the 29, so that'll be Jalen Robotham and Brad James, have better entry to the straight and ultimately will be able to chase down the number one because you have to set it up exiting MG corner. We just uh, see the 38 now withdrawn. That's uh, Matthew Bink in the arrow line marking car. So uh, Bink has come into the back of the paddock area. And let's see that pace. Fastest lap now goes to the 84 of Waghorn. Started out of P3, remains in P3. This is the battle for the lead. Harry Tompkins started on pole, leads the race. James Lodge in the 139. Some great racing these guys are putting on. Giving each other the respect that they deserve and that's what it's all about. Give your fellow racers the respect that you would like to receive. Certainly race hard. Race for every millimetre of the racetrack. Side by side now, Tompkins and Lodge. Waghorn weighing in there, fastest car on track, fastest lap, a two minute, 0.3082. Scarcella design emblazoned across the front of the one, two, three for Darren, Devin Nichols. Big shout out to Nick Scarcella, president of Kayak, the promoting club here this weekend. Great to see the Scarcella designs all over the uh, car number one, two, three of Devin Nichols, qualified for the 203.644 and goes off. That's it, no more talk about Devin Nichols. Commentator's curse comes true. Car looks great. It's Carcella Designs uh, livery. They've got some uh, great liveries around. 95 now. Getting on with business here. This is Jake Harwood, Victorian. We've only got one uh, New South Wales racer in the field. Caleb Heffern in the 6-4-1. Yeah, the uh, 14 goes through nicely there. Hangs on to it, no. The uh, the big run down, yeah, it does hang on to it. Yes, no, maybe. We'll sort it out in a straight line in a minute. Certainly uh, harms the flow when you try and throw it down the inside there at MG. It hardly ever comes off because you don't get to flow the car and Jake Harwood's going to go through on them as well. Here's the front of the race. This is the business end of things. Still got five laps in this journey. Or four and three quarter laps. James Lodge now got uh, right alongside him. Toby Waghorn, the big winner out of Island Magic in November 2022 for the XLs. Doing a nice job. Side by side, under brakes. Down through the gearbox, almost all in harmony with each other. Same ratio, same time, same diff ratio. Down the gearbox they go, up the gearbox they go. You can hear them all changing in unison now. The 61, the Carrack car joining in now. This is Brad James. Where's the 29 of Jalen Robotham? He's off the back, there he is right there. And he has now got Ethan Griggolt. Ethan's qualifying was a bit of a worry actually, a 201.1, particularly when Harry Tompkins is doing 159.6, he's half a second faster, that's a long time in this sort of racing, James Lodge now pushing hard, trying to stay in front of the 84 of Waghorn, you get the feeling now that out in front Harry Tompkins got himself a two or three car, car length lead. And Waghorn is now all over the back of James Lodge, making it very, very hard for him. Bradley James now also weighing in on it, just putting the car in plain sight on the left-hand mirror of both these guys so that they know that he's there, ready, willing, and able to take the lead of the race over. Our race leader coming right down the pit wall, out over the extreme track limits line there. So it's an interesting run there from Harry Lodge. Still the fastest car is Toby Waghorn on lap number two, a two minute 3.0. Harry Tompkins doing uh, his fastest personal best, in fact, last time round, a 2.8. So uh, personal best in the race, of course not qualifying. Qualifying he did a 159.6. 
So there's some good lap times going. Ethan Griggolt now has set the fastest first sector. That's car number one, just off the back of this pack. These guys starting to work together. Waghorn is bringing Brad James with him. Waghorn moves over. 61 looks to the outside now. So Harry Tompkins driving away. Waghorn gets P2. James Lodge goes back into, is it going to be three or four? We'll sort it out at Siberia. Wide. Now flow the car. These three have got to flow the car. You've got to suggest the 139 there of James Lodge. Nice and wide. He'll have a good couple of an hour, hours, kilometre an hour faster out of there. There's a good message across the bottom of your screen. Become a member. Join PyArk. Visit PyArk.com.au. Phillip Island Auto Racing Club. Over 70 years of history. And have a look at James Lodge. Absolute handfuls. I think he's asked a bit much of the Federals in the first couple of laps of this race. So he's maybe just overcooked things a little bit. And he's lost valuable ground in the 139 to our lead pack. He's still amongst it. But uh, that big slide would have been a bit of heart and mouth stuff. Good skills on display there for the 139 across the top of the hill. As they all go straight over to the pit wall. I'm not sure what the fascination with that is. And they all run across the line. It'll be Tompkins, Waghorn, James Lodge, Jalen Robotham to Grid Gold, William Sala. The next one will be Seiko. Good, good uh, way to gauge the gaps here and we've got cars diving left and right there's the 147 of uh Lockie ha no sorry of Christopher Harris was running down in 14th place has come off at the top of Lukey Heights and he's driving right around the uh the track there the Shepherd and CFM Moto CF Moto outfit it's a good battle here this is for 10th and 11th Pons Jonas and Harvey battling it out 25. Some may say Ford Credit, some may say Datsun Rally Team with the uh, red, white and blue stripes there. Tribute livery of some sort, 641 now off the track. Caleb Heffron, the New South Welshman. There's Harvey. to get onto the back of the uh, the 14 of uh, Trey and Kajanis doing a good job there in 10th started out of 12 back to the front of the field back to the front of the field as the cars are coming around to complete their final lap Harry Tompkins has done a brilliant drive here as has Toby Waghorn let's be honest about it started out of three they let the gap get away to Harry Tompkins he applied the pressure to James Lodge and ultimately, James Lodge felt that pressure. Charging in the 61 is Bradley James as well. Check and flag. And Harry Tompkins gets to the line and takes the first of the trophy races for this weekend. Breeds home Toby Waghorn, Brad James, James Lodge, Jalen Robotham coming home for a fighting fifth. He started out of sixth. Ethan Griggolt in number one. Started out of fifth and has gone back one spot with number one on the side of his car. Cars contribute a stream to the line there. Checkered flag being waved by our fantastic Pyark trackside people. The uh, start line grid, main grid people there being led by Reese Carlton Carlos, very, very experienced motorsport official. Well over 35 at Grand Prix, not just Australian, but worldwide Grand Prix under his belt. Confirmation now that Harry Tompkins takes race one over eight laps for, uh, sorry, over six laps for the trophy race for the XLs. Uh, that was eight laps and uh, he gets the win. It's definitely six, sorry. I'll second guess myself and confirm again that it was definitely six. Waghorn, Bradley James, James Lodge, 
Jalen Robotham, Ethan Grigg, Galt. Let's get out of this. William Sala, Josh Sako, Harwood, Kajinas Home in 10. Harvey Nichols Hefnan, Harris Bink, and Kadak round out the 16. Still got racing here to go today with the New South Wales Super Sports qualifying race to come and the E30 second race for the uh, E30s coming up as well. We'll be back with qualifying for the New South Wales Super Sports. Back in a moment. I love race meetings like this. One car field goes off, the next field comes on, and I like it even better when it's this sort of racing. These fantastic super sports from the New South Wales Super Sports Championship qualifying 15 minutes. And uh, these cars are absolutely magnificent around the Phillip Island Grand Prix circuit. I guess we can draw some experiences from the Australian prototype series as well as to the sort of the lap times and the sort of vehicles that we are looking at but let's have a, a quick look at how the 2023 New South Wales Super Sports calendar looks this weekend obviously round one here at the magnificent Grand Prix circuit round two we'll see them at Sydney Motorsport Park on the 15th of April round three will be at Sydney Motorsport Park on the 27th of May round four will be at Sydney Motorsport Park, which is a night round on the 8th of July. So not only will it be chilly, it'll probably be wet, and it'll be under lights, so that'll throw an absolute cat amongst the pigeons for all of the competitors at that. And then we go to the final round on Saturday, the 28th of October at SMP as well. So it is fantastic that they can mix things up and come to the Phillip Island Grand Prix circuit here this weekend. A part of the Piarc March Access event, and the name of the event says it all. It is Access, it's in March, and it's being run by PIARC for all of these great categories that we've got down here. If you've just joined us, we have got the Porsche Michelin Sprint Challenge headlining us this weekend, XLs, the uh, fantastic new Victorian sports car series, uh, BMW E30s, and this fantastic New South Wales Super Sports Championship qualifying on track as we speak. Some fantastic cars out there. Class 1 motorcycle engines up to 1,500 cc. So essentially, we're looking at the SR3 Radicals. If you're at all familiar with the Radical Australia Cup, very similar. Exactly similar. Exactly. 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 Same vehicle that runs as part of that. Class 2 is the Group 2A 2C sports cars above 1,500. The... Uh, six SR motorcycle engines up to 1,340 cc. So you're looking at the West WX1, the Wolves. You're looking at the SR8s, which we've got an SR8 here this weekend. Nick Kelly in the SR8 is fastest on track now, and we're expecting that the SR8 is going to be a, a real weapon here this weekend. A real shame that Phil Hughes from uh, Hughes Sports Car Services can't make it here this weekend. He was trying very, very hard. He's had a massive program 
getting the, uh, the ex Simonson 550 uh, race car ready for its new owner. And uh, Phil did send his best wishes to everyone. I spoke to him yesterday or the day before, but he was well worn out. He's had a very long summer at getting that magnificent Ferrari back ready. And class three, I like these ones. The 2A, 2B Clubmans, your Wests, uh, your Westfields, your PRBs. The PRB series is massive in New South Wales. Your Lotus Sevens, magnificent bits of racing kit. More of a, uh, I guess, a hark back sort of thing to, uh, to racing as it was, but certainly the uh, the Clubmans a very welcome part when they get to join the field. Industry is the uh, the title sponsor, the 2023 20, Industry Clothing New South Wales corporate supporters, uh, also regulator, automation, Oznets, Gary's Motorsports Tires, Oswide Freight as well, ready, set, reline, the pipe repair specials, first neon and illuminating brands. Sydney Composites and the Radical Australia West. So the uh, New South Wales Super Sports Championship, there's Stephen Champion. He knows his way around here. He's raced here before. And at turn nine, we're just seeing the, uh, the geese wandering onto the track. So Stephen will have seen that before. But number 11 just arriving late on the scene there with the, uh, the Cape Baron geese. Coming to say good day, good afternoon, welcome to uh, Phillip Island. Enjoy your racing here this weekend. Doing a uh, terrific job there. So, <laughs> got all of the sports cars out on track now and doing a ripping job. Couple of laps in the belt. Nick Kelly, as you would expect, has uh, in the SR8 gone to a 131.98 now here is a nuance of this series one set of tires so one set of tires on an sr8 which is 2.7 litre v8 variant of the radical is going to get torn up pretty hard as opposed to the uh the 1500 cc sr3 type of radicals that are out there on track the other interesting aspect is there is no tyre rule. Having said that, the Radicals will more than likely all be running on hand cooks. The interesting one is Simon Copping in the West WR WX10, which is the black, very, very low slung, has very, very small amount of frontal area running on an Avon. Uh, pretty much the rest of the field from my quick walk through the... There it is, there's the, the West running on Avons, that car of course, big ex Jason Macris car used to run on Kumos, and in fact it may even be Jason Macris championship winning car from uh, about five or six years ago, but now Simon Copping in the industry car doing a, a ripping job, very very fast, you can see how low slung, even the rear wing is just above the uh, wheel arch height there. Kelly leads the way, so it will be car number one. Sorry, car number six in uh, Peter White. Sorry, in Justin Tagani, Tagani Motorsport Platinum Energy Group. The Radical SR3 multicolored extravaganza. Then we've got the 67 of John Canavan and the Radical as well on the uh, on the hand cook. Before mentioned Simon Copping in the West WR WX10. Then the, uh, the 65 of Simon Arthur, the 4 of Warwick Morris. Warwick Morris has done a fair bit of racing here. And uh, just touching on Simon Copping, which, uh, yeah, I think raced a very, very fast Commodore in sports sedans. Big shout out to Darren Barlow, who uh, regularly races in this series. And uh, again, an apology that. He couldn't make it to the track like many in the world these days, waiting for freight and waiting for parts, waiting for bits and pieces is uh, the bane of many people's lives and uh, unfortunately Darren hasn't been able to join us here this weekend. But Simon's loving his time in the, uh, in the West and wouldn't you, they are an absolute ripping piece of kit. 
very light, very aero-dependent over and under the vehicle, as are the Radicals. So we've got to 65 in uh, position number five. Then it's Warwick Morris. As I said, raced here numerous times in his Radical. The, uh, the 42 of Brame, Mark Brame, in the Radical SR3. And we've got Stephen Champion. Needs very little introduction to Philip Island. Again, raced here many, many times in the GWR. Champions Racing SR3 XX. Then we go to the 78 of Paul Royal, another SR3. And uh, the Victorian in the field, Terry Knowles in his SR3 XX shot with the hand cooks as well. So that rounds out our field of 10 for the New South Wales Super Sports. Have a quick look back down through the field. Justin Tagani in his SR3, 2012 SR3, and he is currently sitting in P3. First time in the Super Sports. Wow. That is a massive hill to climb. First time in the Super Sports. First time at Phillip Island Grand Prix circuit. What a daunting prospect as we just see Nick Kelly charging across the line. Here's a great shot of the 34 of Stephen Champion. Back down through the gearbox. Eases on the throttle. Those newer end plates on the XX. Newer version of the SR3. There's now about six or seven different, different iterations of the SR3. There's the 65 of Simon Arthur, Trax A-plus towing. That's an RSX variant of the Radical. And he is currently sitting in position number seven. Mark Brain jumps the spot on Warwick Morris in the 42 and gets up. And Terry Knowles also a very big welcome. The, uh, the Victorian into the field, his first weekend in the Super Sports as well. So... Great to see newcomers into the New South Wales Super Sports field. The industry sponsored category. Of course, Nick Kelly leading the way there. Many, many years of international GT racing in Audis, R8, LMSs, etc. Has uh, come along in the Super Sports racing and has had many, many wins. Great to see Nick at the, uh, at the track. Remember that black industry Audi that he ran against uh, Steve McLaughlin in the trophy series and that was a massively fought out effort and uh, his car into by Jeff Warshaw Motorsport this weekend. Kelly remains on pole and you would have to say with the tyre rule the way it is he's got himself a three second gap on the field. Probably time to park it up and look after the tyres Steve. Ah uh, Nick sorry. Going slowly he's around the there, that's Paul Royal coming out of turn two. And uh, have a bit of a, a bit of a look at this car as he just comes around the 78 Paul Royal, the Will Roy, Will Roy Kitchens outfit. Matte bronze, it looks like the colour of that is. Great that uh, Mark Brame is doing in the field this weekend as well. First time here at Phillip Island and was last year's champion. So you'd have to uh, expect that an experienced racer, first time at Phillip Island, is uh, getting his head around it and uh, doing a, uh, a terrific job there as well. Everybody seems to have smiles on their faces in the pit and paddock area when I wandered around between practice now and qualifying before we came to today's racing everybody charging around two minutes left to go in the industry new south wales super sport championship nick kelly clean set of hills at the moment and uh, as i mentioned gonna have to be very careful the way he uh, manages his tire set on this car and tagani there as well 65 of Simon Arthur and Simon's doing a, a, a good strong job there Nick Kelly now into the lane as he probably would have expected with only a minute and a half left and really start to have a look at the pressures and repressure the tyres for uh, the start of tomorrow's racing these guys 
for their first race for the weekend at 10.35 tomorrow morning. recovering from a spin down at Siberia so we've seen Simon Arthur trying pretty hard get, uh, get used to the layout here let's we'll have a quick look at the number 65 continues on with this lap 53 seconds left in this session so we'll get another lap around as they come under the Melbourne, Melbourne, Melbourne Bridge synonymous here with Phillip Island Grand Prix circuit now over many, many years. And there's the long shot now to turn three. Jonathan Ka Canavan, the SR3. So the newcomers, Tagani. And Terry Knowles, first weekend. Tagani sitting in P2. And Knowles in five. So good to see, first time out of Phillip Island in this kind of field, super competitive in P2 for Justin in his uh, SR3. There's the West in the field there as well, so every close eye on the West mixing it up there, Simon Copping, sports sedan racer. It's down in ninth place at the moment, just gives it away. It's a one litre outfit of, uh, of Copping. Flag drops on this qualifying session to round out the industry. 2023 industry clothing, New South Wales Super Sport Championship. First qualifying session for the year. A great hit out for the teams coming, uh, coming to Victoria this weekend. In fact, just about every New South Wales racer is in Victoria this weekend, whether it be here at Phillip Island or at uh, Winton Motor Raceway this weekend. So lots of racing going on across the board in Victoria this weekend. The big climb. The picturesque climb out of Siberia up to the top of Lukey Heights. Eyes only for the apex there. That's the good thing about these super sports is you can see right into the, the car and he slows. Looked like he was on a... Uh, a ripper closing out and has absolutely slowed. In fact, there's wheels going to fall off. So, well, let's hope that car number six makes his way back to the uh, the pits. No, we'll pull over at uh, the entry to MG. Lucky there's no other cars coming behind him. They're all exiting the track. Let's have a look at it. Nick Kelly on pole position, a very, very healthy margin over Justin Tagani. Then we go back to uh, John Canavan will be on the second row to Simon Arthur. Terry Knowles will be on the third row to Stephen Champion, Warwick Morris, the two very experienced Radical Races champion and Morris. Mark Brain, last year's champion out of eight. Simon Copping in the west and then Paul Royal, who has joined us from Wollongong on New South Wales south coast and uh, looking really good for a uh, fantastic lot of racing tomorrow. We'll have to get that number six cleaned up. Looks like it's left uh, right-hand rear wheel was about to exit because we've got our last race for the day over six laps. The BMW E30s for Garagistic on track in just a moment.
Well, welcome back, Trackside. Here we are in uh, in the holding zone, holding pattern for the final race for the today, the Garagistic BMW E30 Drivers Cup. All shot on their fantastic Yokohama tyres. Looking forward to seeing the BMWs come out on track. Darren Smith here. I've been joined by Matt Thulis, who is a, a driver coach, amongst many other things. Uh, 2018, 19, whatever it was, uh, Australian production car champion in Class D. Matt, welcome to commentary. Certainly the BMW is coming out on track. Uh, you've been heavily involved with for some time. Absolutely. Firstly, thank you for having me, Darren. It's great to be here. And um, up in the box, it's a great view. I'll tell you what, Philip Island has turned on the weather too. It's been fantastic. And yeah, looking forward to watching race two in the E30 Garagistic BMW race series. They put on a really good race in the first one. And uh, looking forward to see what this one might do. So, yeah, we're just watching uh, now the volunteer officials load up the, um, the radical that is on, on track there. Um, if you are interested at all, Matt, I guess both you and I have come from varied backgrounds in motorsport, but we can't do anything without our volunteer officials trackside, can we? Absolutely not. They're uh, the lifeblood of motorsport, if you ask me. And without them, we can't be doing what we, we all love most. And, uh, yeah, big cheerio, massive thank you to all of them. They're out there uh, doing the best job they possibly can and allowing us to go do what we love and go race or commentate or do whatever we want to do that, that's related to motorsport. So massive thank you to them. And we touched on just before that, you know, there is racing going right around Victoria. So there is a bit of a stretch on the volunteer officials in Victoria here this weekend. Winton are running, strangely enough, New South Wales State round, being that they're down to one track, the, unfortunately, in New South Wales. But uh, here this weekend, um, of course, last there? weekend, that World Superbikes, again, all these events run by volunteer officials. And we thank very much, particularly the organisers of this event, PIARC. They're very, very active in recruiting officials into... Uh, into the sport, and you can check it all out at www.piarc forward slash officials, I think, is the, uh, the official place to go. And uh, that is what we're showing the world out there as well. I interestingly enough, Matt, this is a basically a for TV only event this weekend, closed event, the mm. uh, no public in. So uh, it's really easy to join in the fun, isn't it? Just log on and join in everything that Blendline TV are doing. Well, it's all there for you to see. And uh, it's like being trackside, essentially. But uh, yeah, no, and Blendline do a wonderful job at you know, covering all the motorsport here, especially uh, what I've noticed in Victoria for certain has been fantastic. And, um, yeah, they, they put on another good show yet again today. And I have no doubt it'll be the same again tomorrow. Certainly has been. It's been great to see Blendline coming on board with uh, the, uh, the Victorian State Circuit Racing Championships as well, the Triple Eight Home Loans Victorian State Race Series. And uh, here this weekend for the 2023 March Pyark Island Access here we've got plenty of racing on tomorrow starting 9.10. Well, we're rounding out today and starting tomorrow with BMW E30s over 10 laps. At 9.40, the Hyundai XL Masters race number two. The Masters certainly put on a ripping race earlier today. Nice and clean over eight laps and eight laps tomorrow. The title competition here this weekend at 10.05 will have their first race for the weekend. The Porsche Michelin Sprint Challenge. The absolute stars of tomorrow on display there and some veterans doing some fantastic racing there as well. New South Wales Supersports will have their first race at 10.35. Another Hyundai race. Then the production sports cars, their second race for the weekend. They've already turned it on for us today. BMW E30s will have race four. Gee, race four for the weekend by lunchtime tomorrow. There's going to be some weary old BMWs, isn't there? I think they'll appreciate the uh, early finish to get home nice and early too. So. Absolutely. Hyundai XLs again, 12.35. Super Sports, Michelin, Porsche Michelin Sprint Challenge. And uh, the day will go on. We'll be back in just a moment with E30s on track.
Poised to balance everything that is E30 racing there in that little package as we go into this race for this afternoon, rounding out our competition for the day. Already had a race and uh, the garagistic BMW E30s with Liqua Molly on board as well. And their Yokohamas, proudly supplied by the traction tyre centre, the field already out on track. It will be Jesse Bryan, aggressive grid. He won the race this, uh, earlier on today to the number 27 of Brian Burke. Alex Jory, gee, he won't like that in the orange car coming off row number two. Alec, Ash Rogers next, then it's Royce Lynn, first time out of XLs and into the BMWs here this weekend in car number four. Keep an eye on that young fella. Simon Schiff in the 55, the urban camouflage, bright red and gold outfit. Jeff Bowles looking for something big out of the number 24 to fight back from there. Seth Boycard's first time out in the uh, number 42. Rory Plant in the number seven in the upflow brewing outfit. Jess Bell in the 29 out of position number 10. Let's see where Jess can push to today. Shannon Cooper in the number 90. Always, always having a great time as is Daryl O'Neill. Peter Knight and Adam Trapsky rolling it out at the uh, back of the field. Let's hope these guys line them up like they did last time. That was brilliant. They all came down all, uh, all in order, ready to go. It looks like they're it's a little bit more of a hurry to get going here this time around. So uh, the better way to do it is get out there and get on the grid and get underway, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. And yes, I love how they do the formation. It's a uh, credit goes to Dave Stilwell actually, who's put this in place, and I think it's a wonderful spectacle. But also helps with us getting grid up a lot quicker and naturally getting the races going fairly quickly after that. So it certainly is one of those things when promoters look at a category and they go, "Hang on a minute, that category takes nine minutes to do a warm up lap. This category takes three minutes." Let's get those guys. They're going to help our race meeting go very well. Have a look at that. Jesse Bryan right up the front of the box. And Burke, actually, he's coming back. He's just quietly there. moved he's back a little bit there. Back. And Brian Burke in the number 27. He's, in fact, extremely off the back of the box there in the Trans Rock landscape up. rock outfit. And he is doing a good job just trying to push forward. Light. David Levy Light. Motorsport sticker on the Light. front of the car. Liquid Light. Molly on all the cars as well. And we are away. A little bit napping there for Burke. Simon Schiff gets away brilliantly, as does Cooper, getting away nicely down the uh, the back of the field there. The triple six of Adam Trapsky just left wanting there a little bit. Have a look at Brian Burke now right up alongside. They're going to go side by side into turn one. Burke just gets out of it, tries to keep the inside running to turn two open. The options there. Jesse just closes it. Didn't slam it, did he? He just left it open for long enough. Just enough, but Burke's going to push on here, and Alex Jury's looking very menacing in third place so watch out for him as they battle down towards turn four i do like the way alex has got the uh, the tape across the headlights in the crosshairs sort of thing like he's lining everyone up for a target he's lining up brian burke for a run under brakes down into turn four for the first time Three wide. he's going to be pushed wide but it puts jury on the inside running for siberia but it's going to be a long long way around goes out over the ripple strip and jory I don't reckon he's enjoying this. He likes to have fresh air up in front of him. He's very much used to being out in front in fresh air, but he doesn't mind having a race and battling with the other cars when required. So looks to have put a good move here on Brian Burke if he can hold position. And he'll be chasing down his arch nemesis at the moment, and Jesse Bryan. They've been very close and racing very hard over the last few rounds. Good to see this sort of rivalry alive and well in the BMW E30s, the garagistic BMW E30s. Have a look at Burke. These two have been side by side since they entered turn four. Across the top of the hill, this is some great trust between these two race drivers. Trust that they've got the skill, trust that they've got the whereabouts and the spatial awareness to give each other some room to race. The Bell Motorsport entered 22 all over the back of the 27 of Brian Burke now. Yeah, experienced campaigners, so they know what to do and not to do. And it looks like Simon Schiff and Royce Lyon are there to really pick up the pieces if something does go wrong. I'll tell you what, what they've got to do is they've got to pick up the pieces and get their heads down and work on not, not letting Jesse yeah. Bryan drive away. Absolutely. He has pulled about probably 10 car lengths. We're going to go four the wide. Opening, right? yeah, the garagistic BMW E30s at least three wide. Brian Burke just in front. Royce Lynn right round the outside. He's going to take P3 he from has. P5. Great move. That's some straight line uh, handling right there. Absolutely got the draft, which is always very beneficial here at Phillip Island, especially in these cars. 
fact, what's the secret to getting speed out of these cars? They're well balanced. You know, they're off the production line. They've Absolutely. got a well balanced package. Yeah, what, well balanced car. Speed? Yeah, look, they're a really good package out of the box. But ultimately, the key to them, because they're not blessed with a heap of power, they've got enough. Ultimately, you just got to keep up the momentum to the best of your ability. And if you can flow the car nicely, keep it pretty straight and tidy. Generally, the lap times come. But as you can see, they also create fantastic racing. It's good, really good, tight, close racing. And to be fair, they've been playing nice and fairly, which is nice for a change. Uh, not that they're renowned for banging up panels, because naturally these cars are getting on a little bit, and they're not as easy to find replacement panels for and fix and other bits and pieces. But it's certainly not a feature of this racing. The Garagistic uh, Series has been exceptionally fair. Uh, racing room seems to always be given. You know, there's the odd bits and pieces here and there, which normally get ticked off as a racing incident anyway. No malice, really. Absolutely. It comes with the uh, the nature of the sport, doesn't it? Unfortunately, occasionally you're going to rub some panels. But, but all in all, they do drive exceptionally well, very safe and respectfully. But race very hard, which is on, on show here with the first five. Rory Plant now got the 42 all over the back. That's Seth Boycott's on the Great debut, move. gets through on the experience, Rory yes. Plant. Great move by Seth. I've been coaching him a little bit, and it's his first actual race here at Phillip Island. So I've been really impressed with him. He's got some genuine natural talent, and uh, I reckon he's a one for the future to keep an eye on. Certainly it's in the blood, isn't it? Absolutely. His uh, dad's been racing the Porsches and uh, being a part owner at FPR. As they come streaming down the straight again. We're going to go three wide again. It's going to be Brian Burke will lead them through. Then Royce, Lit no, Alex Jory oh. slots in there. Alex is a, geez, a fearsome campaigner. It really does. Uh, he'll he'll give the room and he'll be fair, but he wants to fight back, doesn't he? And that's what it's all about. Absolutely. I mean, he's renowned for being a hard racer, and I mean. I've seen him have many good tussles, in particular with Jeremy Payne, who's not yes. here with us this weekend, which is disappointing. But anyway, they've still got a lot of work to do because Jesse Bryan is clearly out in front, followed by Brian Burke. Now it looks like Jury will put a move down the inside on Royce Mine, so that's a great move by him, but he switches back. I'll tell you what, Simon Schiff's just waiting to pick up the scraps. He is, isn't he? Yeah, Rory. Uh, sorry, um, um, Alex Jory there is going... Great guns, and this young fella, Royce Lynn, who was in XLs last year and karting before that, getting some good experience. I, I guess getting into a rear-wheel drive car is a is a good choice out of the uh, the front-wheel drive XLs. You learn some stuff there, and what you do learn in XLs, which is why he's got some good pace, is flowing the car, Absolutely. keeping that rev right on that number Absolutely. that it has to sit on. Yeah, well, I actually had the pleasure of having a great race with Royce here uh, one at our last round here, but. Uh, he's a good little young talent, and uh, he's a respectful young man, hell of a nice kid, and got a lot of time for him, and he drives the uh, E30, and most race cars that I've seen him in really, really well. Yeah, yeah, credit to him as well, keeping himself, keeping the nose clean. Certainly don't want to get a bloody nose in this sort of racing. They'll come down on you pretty hard. So, Alex Jory now in a very, very unfamiliar position, P3 on the road. Jesse Bryan, let's have a look at the gap. Last time around, 0.85 between Burke and... Jesse, this time, just under a second. All intents and purposes, a second. So Jesse's getting away at the moment. So Brian needs to, uh, I'm going to say, reach up, grab that mirror, flick it into the back seat and glue it back on later on tonight. It'd be a wise move, but I feel like they might be able to just make some momentum here. The car's sort of in second, third and fourth and hopefully maybe work up onto Jesse Brian. That's what they'll be thinking. They probably battled a little hard too early there for position. Now they need to play a bit of a smart game with three laps remaining to try and at least get on the back of Jesse Bryan and fight for that win, which they are all wanting. I tell you what, a six-lap race no matter. It's every corner counts, isn't it? You've got, to, you've got to try every single thing, every yeah, corner. Basically, that's what they've done. And Brian Burke has moved up beautifully on the back of Jesse Bryan. He's showing some really good pace. 72 opportunities, 72 corners in a six-lap race here. So that's what you've got to do. And not every corner is an opportunity. Let me tell you, turn three, you don't go try to pass too many people there. Set them up for an under brakes move down at turn four. And around here as well. Look at the gap now. Jesse's just fallen back a little bit, or has Brian picked up the pace? It is actually Brian's Brian, because he's setting green sectors. sectors. Yeah, absolutely. So he's found some speed here, Brian. And in fact, he's on for a uh, fastest lap of his own. He has done the fastest lap of this race. He did the fastest lap of the race earlier today as well. A 154.21. That's the benchmark. Have Ooh. a look at him moving around. The number 27. Oh, it's lying up the inside of Alex Jury. They'll fight it out side by side here. Now, this could be 
A battle of the bravest. Respectfully too Absolutely. at the moment. And Alex Jory just eases on that one and says, right out, there you go, fella. Open it up for you. I'll try and flow the 22 nicely onto the straight and uh, let's see if we can get some pace in a straight line here. Let's have a look at the gap now. Last time round, 0.39. Not changed too much this time round. It's 0.75. And uh, it was that Royce who's done the fastest, fastest lap of the race. Clocks the first one into a 153. Just a 153.99. Pretty, pretty close. You've done it though, haven't you? He's done a 53. 53 and he'll yeah. take it. Exactly. But it appears that Al Brian's got really good speed up over the top, but Jesse seems to be able to just pull a bit of a gap down the straight. So interesting to see. Obviously, maybe setups are coming into play there. Once again, a lap and a half to battle it out at the moment. We look back into the field here. There's the, uh, the 24 and the 50. So um, just looking back through the field. So that's Jeff Bowles. Yep, and you've got Goose Rogers and then Young Sveth. What happened to uh, what happened to Goose? He's back in seventh. Started out on the second row of the grid there, so he's gone gone backwards a few spots there. Yeah, not not exactly sure to be honest with you there, Darren. I, I am a bit surprised because he showed amazing pace in practicing in qualifying. So I'm not sure whether he's battling with a setup issue or there is maybe a mechanical issue with the car that he's just trying to get to the end nice and safely and accumulate some points. But young Seth Burkhardt's definitely pressuring him all the way here, so he's going to have to work hard for his money. Certainly is. We are coming down to the final stanza of this race, and you'd have to say that uh, the Yokohama will stand up brilliantly over six laps. There won't be too much No concern. problem there. So Royce yeah. Lynn has gone through there, takes P2, the young fella <laughs> on a charge. And he's looking fast, Royce Lynn. He looks very quick here, and he's right on the back of Jesse Bryan. He's looks got to, look to the inside. Gee, jagged out no, and he's... had a look. He'll try and slip streaming down the straight here. That'll be the wise move, especially with one lap to go. He's going to have to make this move and make it stick and then hold on to the finish line. But he's right on the back bumper of Jesse Bryan. And uh, now we're seeing Alex Jory come through as well on Bryan. Look to the inside. So we've got uh, O'Neill slowed right down there around the back of the track. But it is all happening out in front now. This is for the lead of the race. There it is. Stopped there on turn two. That's O'Neill. And uh, the number four is all over. Bryan now. The young fella in a hurry. Boy, he's flowing the car well. Have oh, a look at the exit speed good. on the corner. He Looks might even have him here. He's got the run. Jesse's, sorry, Darren. Jesse's going to have to hang tight on the outside. This is brave. Who's going to be the last of the late breakers here? Royce has put himself in a position now. He should be able to try and attempt an over and under up to Siberia. He certainly signalled his intent for the weekend. Wants to come away from the weekend with a P1. And he could set himself up nicely here. He's floated around the outside. This is going to give him a good couple of an hour, kilometres an hour of speed as he gets up to yeah, seven well, and eight. Jesse Bryan's very defensive here, which is fair enough. It's one lap to go. He can hold his position and do what he can to try and hold onto this P1. But Royce Lyon is all over him. I'll be looking at, I think Royce will be looking for a, a late move down to MG here. Can he make this stick, though? That's going to be the big question. Some great racing here. Brian goes tight. That's going to affect his entry speed onto the straight. Royce flows the car nicely. He has got the absolute flow of the Phillip Island Grand Prix circuit. Down <laughs> Pat looks to the inside. He's going to challenge. I think he's... The yellow lights look up the inside. He's got the inside he's got running the inside here. Running. He's going to line it up. Jesse Bryan just oh, gives hang him it enough tough. room. Just enough room. Oh, he this is crazy. Through. It's going to be a drag race. It's a drag race. Now. Who's going to get it? Oh, it's going to be Jesse Bryan who gets it done by not much, to be honest. Point, Point zero, zero two. two. That is crazy. What a race. Great run to the line there. Here's another great run to the line with Jeff Bowles and the number 50 of Ash Rogers. Ash would dearly like to get a result out of this, but he's gone backwards in this race. Hopefully the, the car's okay. So they come to the line. It'll be Jesse Bryan takes race number two. Royce Lynn in the number four gets through. Alex Jory in the 22 will be scratching his head, as will the 27 with Brian Burke. Simon Schiff to uh, Jeff Bowles, Ash Rogers, Seth Boycart, Rory Plant home there as well. Jess Bell rounds out our 10, and Shannon Cooper, I think the last of our cars on track.
gets to the line there. So Jess Bell on the 27 rounds out our uh, number our top 10 as the triple six of Tupesky and Peter Knight get to the line there as well. Matt Thoulis, thank you so much for your time, mate. Really Pleasure. good to have some expert comment up here and a, a guy that knows the, the human condition behind the wheel like you do. It really does uh, lend some uh, great expertise. So, so thank you so much, Matt, for lending us your time here today. My pleasure. Thanks for having me on. So we have got a full day of action tomorrow, starting from 9.05 on the Blendline TV live streaming. XLs will again open up like they have closed the doors for us tonight. XLs, the Porsche Michelin Sprint Challenge. Who will take first blood in that coveted title for 2023? We have got a line neck deep of youngsters that want to take that win tomorrow. New South Wales Super Sports, if their first uh, qualifying session and how close that's going to be is anything to go by. We're really looking forward for the, uh, the Super Sports race tomorrow. XLs and, of course, the Victorian sports cars will light up the track here at the Phillip Island Grand Prix circuit. I've been Darren Smith. A big thanks to all of our officials and the Blendline TV crew that worked so very hard to bring us this racing right throughout the season. We'll be back tomorrow. See you then.